Well, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time you have gracious with your presence on the show, welcome, happy to have you here. The way this works, super, super simple. On your screen, you will see a chat box. In that chat box, you can enter your question, comment, concern of the day. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I do not, but either way, Either way, we have an awesome time talking about lawn care. So guys, some, some slight technical uh, difficulties tonight. So we're only on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook tonight, no Twitter tonight. I'm gonna get that worked out between now and next week. So if you're on Twitter and you're looking for it, come over to, uh, to the YouTube or to the Facebook. So let's see what we have in the live stream tonight. We got Patrick in Texas. We got, um, we got Michael um, Anger saying, uh, uh, serious business is the answer. So yeah, so guys, we, so if you guys left comments earlier in the show, like earlier before, um, while we were while the show was, get, was getting started, you may have to repost those. Um, but so I can so I can get them in the stream. But yeah, there's a lot of really great comments, and I want to make sure that I uh, that I answer them. So starting with like uh, Betcher and uh, some others, definitely definitely relieve your definitely hit your comments back up again. Like just answer them again, and I will do my best to uh, to to answer them. So the first question we had tonight, guys, is um, is one that was, was posted earlier. And I took a screenshot of it. It's a great one given this time of the year. And it was around pre-emergent. James Jason Harrison says, spring pre-emergent. Thoughts on three rounds? Uh, split prodiamine into rounds one and two, followed by dithiopyr for round three, overkill? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I In my opinion, uh, that, that would be overkill. Um, you got to remember, you're talking to a guy that typically does one heavy application of prodiamine uh, in February, and that's that's it. You know what I mean? I do I do like a, a, a higher rate application. So for Bermuda grass, that's closer to the 0 
uh, per ounce, per, uh, 8.80 um, per thousand square feet mixed with a gallon of water, like that that rate. I do that once in February and I call it good for the season. And that's worked well for me. You can do split apps if, if you'd like, um, but I definitely wouldn't do three. So if, if you're gonna, if you want to do more than one, I would take your prodiamine rate, like your annual limit, if you're only gonna use prodiamine in the spring and uh, do that here in a week or two. And then in April, you can do the other half of it if you uh, if you like, you know what I mean? But I would not do uh, two rounds of prodiamine and dithiopers, just, just not necessary. There's no reason to put that much that much pre-emergent down on the lawn. So pick pick one, um, you know, uh, uh, pick pick which one you want to go with, apply it at the correct rates and you're gonna get a good result. Just make sure you water it in and you will be, uh, you'll be absolutely, you'll be absolutely fine. So it's one of, the, one of the topping points tonight, guys, is around like, you know, we're getting ready to start the season. It's getting, um, we're getting to the point where we're going to start doing pre, um, pre-emergent and other and other things. So I'm going to talk about some, some, um, some points about what I'm going to be doing, like how I typically start my season off. And you guys can take uh, the parts of it that, that are, work for you and, you know, take the, 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 the areas that can apply to your lawn care program. And, and perhaps you'll be able to get a better result this year than in years past. So Jason, thank you so much for the question. I got it earlier and I, um, I wanted to, I took a screenshot of it and just made sure I had it here so that we could, so we could answer that. But, uh, but yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. And anyone that's, again, if you were in the show earlier when I was just kind of cutting up with you guys, uh, repost your question again so that I can um, make sure I get it up on the show tonight. All right, uh, Patrick in Texas up next. He says, a new sticker is on the fridge. So guys, if you see, if you were in the sh- in the, sh- the the pre-show you were just talking before and your question or comment was before this one that I see here, if you scroll up, you know that yours didn't make it into the queue. So just, just repost it again and I'll get I'll get it get, take care of. So Patrick says, new sticker's on the fridge. Thanks, Ron. You are very, very welcome, Patrick. So what Patrick is talking about, guys, is one of these guys. It is the new golf course lawn stickers, the the, the holographic ones that we uh, have. I had like a, like a small batch of these made up. You guys on the gram, you can see as well too. And I sent these out to the Golf Course Academy members, so the members got some, got, um, got them. And uh, the way I'm making them available to people on the live stream is, it's, I can only um, put them in certain orders. So, so, so orders that are shipped from a local warehouse here, um, you can, if you if you place an order for a Celeprin SC Primo Max um, or the herbicide kit, so like the Celsius Certainty Kit or the Cool Season Kit, I can ensure that you get one of these, but for everything else, you'll get um, you'll get a different you'll get a different sticker with your with your order. But these guys are, are pretty limited. I don't have that many of them. So uh, so if you like fancy stickers, you like getting stuff that other people don't really can't easily get their hands on. Uh, there you go. So place an order uh, again over the weekend. So by if, you know if an order comes in like Monday, um, it's just going to get the the other stickers. So any, this is mainly for people on the live stream and for Academy members. So again, from now until we'll call it, um, Monday morning at 10 AM after 10 AM Monday morning, uh, you, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. How about that? But I'm glad you appreciate you like it, Patrick. Uh, uh, I, your, your fridge, your, uh, your sticker fridge is actually really cool. So I'm glad that I am, I'm honored to have made it on there. So those of you guys that are also here on Instagram, welcome as well. If you have any questions, definitely drop them into the chat. So we'll make sure we get you guys taken care of Show you guys some love as well too. All right. See Hills up next. He says, Greetings and salutations, Ron and Lawn Troopers. Happy Friday and waiting for some great content. I'm gonna do my best, man. I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna do my best to not dis- not disappoint. We got Jeremy White in the house saying, "Big bro, oh, so guys, that's a that's a uh, um, he's a jujitsu guy. So I appreciate the uh, the the kind words there, Jeremy. Thanks for coming to hang out. Hopefully you did well in your in your tournament. I know you're always rolling, but I mean, hopefully you, you know if you're if you're still doing matches that you're doing well with that. We got Mr. Michael uh, Anger up next saying. Uh, happy Friday. He says, my wife always asks me, what do you guys talk about on this chat about grass for three hours? LOL. We're talking about serious business, um, uh, Michael. You know, this is this is not, uh, you know, this may seem like just a game, but this is this is serious business. You know what I mean? This is how we, we dominate the neighbor. You know, you got to tell her, the best answer is this. You got to say, sweetheart, you know how like the other ladies in the neighborhood, whenever they walk by, they look at the lawn or the guys that walk by and look at the lawn and they're like, how does this grass look so amazing? This is how I get all those secrets and tips on how we do that, how we create the lawn that, that the neighbors envy. This is how. So this is really an investment in our like our domination in our street. So, so there you go. That's, that's, that's a great answer. It's a great answer. It's factual, right? All right, we got Mary J up next. Mary, what's going on? Glad to see you back. So Mary, so it's funny. Like this, Now that we are getting into the season, a lot of the diehards, people that were here last year are coming back again, which is really cool. She says, hey, Ron, stopping by to hit the thumbs up. I appreciate that. Got my predominant down and had 1.6 inches of rain. Hoping for the best. It was more than I expected. That's going to be great. It's going to be just fine. I wouldn't worry about that at all, Mary. That's uh, that's just what you want with pre-emergent. You know, the only thing 
better than running irrigation is getting it watered in for free, which you got, which is very, very, very cool. Good job getting your pre-emergent down. I'm gonna be doing mine. I was planning to do it this weekend, but I have to go out of town tomorrow um, just for just for the day. So I will be, um, you know, I will I will do it the following weekend. So I'm gonna, you know, so yeah. Had plans, had plans to do this weekend, but it's not gonna happen now because of um, of of weekend plans. So so there you go. That's such as such as life, right? Uh, that happens. That happens at times. But good job. You're ahead of the game. Get your pre-merge it down. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. Next up, we got uh, John Ra Will says, "What's good, uh, people? Happy Friday." What's going on, guys? Uh, what's going on, John? Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you, as always. And then uh, Betcher. Actually, it looks like the comments did come in. It's got, it's got uh, scrambled out of order, so. We'll see. We'll roll with it, right? Okay, Papa Mo's Lowe's up next. He says, ordered Humic Max today. Going to try it uh, over my favorite Pro Pete. Nice. I, I appreciate you giving, I appreciate you giving the old, the old H Max, the old H Max a, a, a try, man. I don't think you'll be disappointed in this um, um, Papa Mo's Lowe's. I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. It's a great product. Uh, I love it. I've had great results with it. I'm super happy we were, were be able to carry it again. And on that note, guys, so you guys know that I set up a pre-order last week, last week for Humic Max. Um, we were expecting delivery of it in February, mid-February. That's what the said on the store, but we got it in early. It actually came in today. So if you order Humic Max, and I'll actually go over here and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So if we go over to the store and go to shop and then to Lawn Fertilizer, the very first option is Humic Max, this guy right here. Um, between now and the end of the month, right, you can save 5% on, on a bag of this, or there's really no limit. You can buy as much as, as you want. So if I like do a, a fake add to cart here, you can see, you'll see this in your um, in your cart. You get to load up on Humic Max. It's the load up on Humic Max discount. Uh, you don't have to do anything special to check out with it. All you have to do is just uh, just 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 buy it, and uh, it'll it'll the discount is automatically, automatically applied. So if you are looking at getting into some Humic Max, um, now is the time to do it. Now until the end of January, I didn't get to do anything cool for you guys for Black Friday last year. So this is like my, you know, my way of, of doing something this time of year that you're also going to be able to benefit for this season. So if you want to use Humic Max and you want to save some money, you know, you can buy as much of it as you absolutely want. We got enough to where you guys should be good to go. So I'm happy. Any of you guys that did pre-orders as well, you should have all gotten tracking numbers. All your stuff should have shipped today. And, uh, and yeah, so we're ahead of the game. All the stuff's in and we are good to go. So I'm glad that you're giving me a shot, um, Papa Mo's Low. Keep me posted on how it works for you. I think you're gonna like it. I think you're gonna like it. It's a pretty good product. It's a pretty good product. So uh, so yeah, good stuff, good stuff. All right, next up is Demarcus Thompson. He says, greetings, Ron and everyone. I got my soil tests, one for the front and a separate one for the back. Got my pre-emergent down afterwards. I'm in a new home, so this will be my first season and I wanted to be thorough. Nice, that's a good idea. You know, the, I, the thing with that is, um, you know, doing a soil test, one for the front, one for the back, the first time around, isn't a bad plan. It isn't a bad plan. And then what you'll find is as you get the, um, as you, you make the amendments for the particular areas and get things more a little more balanced, a little more evened out, then you should be able to move to just a, a single soil test for both parts of the lawn. Um, and you know, it'll, it'll just save you a little bit of money. You don't have to go out and run two tests and have to compare two different samples. You, you can do it either way, right there. I have, I get some viewers that when they send me um, uh, soil test results to look at, they'll still, they still send me one for the front, one for the back, uh, and they just want to consistently do that because they want to track them independently. That's perfectly fine too. So it just depends on which way you want to go. But good job of getting a soil test. You know, uh, feed your lawn, fertilize your lawn based on those soil test results, and uh, it's going to be really hard for you to not win. All you have to do after that. Just mow it and keep it looking nice, and and that's it. You'll be you'll be good to go. Congrats on the new home, on the new purchase, and uh, yeah, good job on getting a soil test done. Okay, guys, so on that topic, um, so I wanted to, to spend a little time talking about um, like the prep for this season, like to get, to get ready to, to go for the 2023 lawn care season. What I'm going to be doing, and you, by extension, what I've done in the past, and what you guys can can do as well, if you guys are uh, you, if you like the results that I get on my lawn. So the first thing. Kind of like what Demarcus is saying is I'm getting a soil test done. So I've I did one in December and I'll I'll do one here uh, next month. So get your soil test done. Um, that's that's super important. The one that I like is the one from my soil. These are super easy as far as being able to um, use. The results are easy to understand and you get recommendations along with it whenever you use this one. So this is why I I like and recommend these. So get a soil test done. Also, if you're planning to do 
your pre-emergent, um, you know, an earlier pre-emergent application, then I'm a fan of also doing a light cleanup cut. You know, not necessarily your full scalp, but a little pre-scalp action. I am, I am, I am down for that. I, I like to do that just to kind of, um, again, not, not taking too much off, just to kind of clean up, clean out some of the, some of the dead debris. Um, and if you're doing a granular, it's going to help the pre-emergent get past, you know, all that that thick mat of Bermuda grass or zoysia grass, or whatever you're working with, that might be, might have built up over the winter and it's gonna allow your pre-emerger to get into the soil easier and work a bit better. So this thing one, get your soil test done. Thing two, do a light cut. I'm not talking about a full scalp, a little cleanup cut. Make sure you take the clippings out when you do that. And then uh, apply your pre-emergent. This year around, I'm gonna be going with prodiamine. I'm gonna be doing prodiamine this year on the on the lawn. That's gonna be doing all on my lawn. When we do Alex's lawn, we'll do prodiamine as well. And the neighbor next door will also get uh, prodiamine um, as well. So soil test. Cleanup cut, that part is optional if you want, but I, I like to do it. Get your prodiamine down, your pre-emergent down. And then really you're in a waiting game. You're in a waiting game till, you know, March timeframe, like uh, you know, early, mid, um, early to mid-March, depending on where you are in the country, depending on what the temps are. Um, you know, for, if you're in the Southeast United States, like, like uh, Georgia, um, Florida, you know, along the Gulf Coast where it gets warmer faster than if you're in Massachusetts. Um, then you can look into applying your fertilizer, your first fertilizer for the season, um, based on your soil test results. I, I like a higher potassium fer fertilizer. So what I'm going to be doing this year to start the season is the, um, the new stress one that we have, the 12 0 I'm going to open up with that. And then I'm going to switch to Humic Max for the remainder of the season. So my first fertilizer after the season is going to be, and I actually can show you guys that because I'm, I'm talking about this and some of you guys, I'm assuming you guys all know what I'm talking about. So if you go to the Golfers Lawn Store, go to Lawn Fertilizer, and then, um, so this guy is going to be my staple. That's going to be using um, really April through uh, se September timeframe. To start the season, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to start with the 12024, and to end the season, I'll, I will likely end with this one. Uh, now, the, the situation where you would use the complete, this the 14714 is a situation where your soil test results say that you need phosphorus. So if you need phosphorus in your in your uh, in your soil, that's where the complete comes in. So it's a it's kind of like in the name. It's complete. It has everything. It's got all your your macros, um, the mac and the micros that that give you a nice green color to your lawn. So like for a all in one product, um, it's really hard to beat the complete. But I'm not going to be applying this because I have adequate phosphorus levels. So I'll start with the stress and then switch over to Humic Max uh, throughout the. Uh, the growing season. And then after that, it's just mowing, right? So just to recap, soil test, like, like a light pre-scalp if, if you are, if you want, that part is kind of optional, but I like to do it. Get your pre-emergent down, very important. And then when your lawn is beginning to green up, you're starting to see some green coming, you're starting to mow your first application, a higher potassium for a good way to start the season. It's what I like to do. So hope that helps you guys. That is what, that is what the, uh, the plan is for moi. And hopefully that gives you guys some, you know, some guidance as far as uh, which way to go in your long care program. Now, if you are in further north, again, I'm answering um, those those dates that I'm giving and those time frames I'm giving is really if you are in the Southeast United States, right? If you're still up north, again, Massachusetts, New, upstate New York, you're not gonna, you don't need to be applying pre-emergent next week because the ground's probably still frozen. You may have still snow on the ground. I'm talking more for the Southeast. If you're up north, um, more so you're probably leaning more towards the towards the end of February when you would be looking at doing your pre-emergent app. So just just make sure that you know whenever you when I'm when I'm giving um, these dates, that's that's based on if you are in my neck of the woods. If you're in a colder climate, you're just gonna have to you know add add three to four weeks um, to that based on what the temperatures and what the weather is doing in your particular area. So good stuff. Good stuff. Let's see um, what else we got here as far as questions from the gram. It says, any thoughts on ferrous sulfate and AMS app early this spring? Um, no, not really. I've never done, I've never done either of those um, NK uh, Kentucky Bluegrass King. I've never done either of those, so I can't really comment on um, comment on them. But I appreciate the question. Yeah, and no, I can't can't give you anything on that one. All right, so we have our first super chat of the evening. And of course, it is none other than the notorious LG. Super chat received. He says, hey, Ron, can't wait for Iowa spring so I can taste one of those hot new fertilizers. Nothing like watching uh, Ron Henry in 4K. I don't know, me in 4K, you got you have this in 4K? I Listen, I apologize. I, get, like, I, I do my best to try and get the lighting as good as I can. But, you know, the, the camera, the lens, the lighting can only do so much. So hopefully I'm on a small screen where I'm not like, you know, all up in your face and stuff. But I, I appreciate the, uh, the love and support, uh, LG. He says, uh, cue up the singing cats. <laughs> All right. 
I'll take that. Thank you so much for the super chat, sir. And because you are first, and by definition, the highest super chat of the evening, you are our show sponsor. And because I, let me see, Noah, yeah, you got, of course you got your, your, your son. So I got to put that in there for you as well. So there you go. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. There you go. Right there. Cool. Yeah, man, should be a fun, should be a fun time. I'm looking forward to the season, guys. So the way this, this uh, week started out was super, was very, very wet, very, very wet start to the week. And uh, I can actually show you guys what I was working with as far as the line. If you guys are following my YouTube stories or some of the, the shorts that I do, you already know. But um, this is what was happening just a few days ago here in the great state of Georgia. So, you know, you want to get a little bit of rain, but not rain like that. I mean, that's 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 a bit much. That's a bit much, right? Like, you see, I had some swimming pool action there. You, you, I mean, I don't know. But it's probably probably two, three inches of water standing there. And uh, and. So quite a bit. I was happy to get rain, but not like that much rain. And the fun, funny thing is, is that, uh, and I should have taken a picture of it, but really by, uh, by lunchtime, by noon, it was all gone. By noon, it was all gone. Now granted, it was still damp. If you walked in that part of the lawn, it was still a little bit soggy. Like it wasn't like dry, like the rest of the lawn. But as far as the water standing on the lawn and staying there, absolutely gone. Didn't, it didn't st stick around very long. So again, I, I give a lot of that or I attribute a lot of that to the fact of um, the, all the top dressing the lawn has had over the years. It just really just pulls moisture away from the surface, really helps it drain well. So very, very happy about that. But for any of you other guys that have not top dressed your lawn, you're saying, you know what? I had all this crazy rain in Georgia and my lawn's now a bit of a mess. It's all muddy and, and I got you know problems with drainage in my lawn. What can I do? I got you covered. So what we did is I put together a blog post here and I will link it here in the chat for you guys. So if you got a really wet lawn, muddy lawn and you're looking for some solutions or some some tips some things you can do some of those things really um you'll you will do this upcoming season but they will help with drainage so some some of you can't necessarily do now but it'll give you some things to put in mind to for plans to do this year that will help with that and i'll put that in the chat now but i'll show you here the um the post i'm talking about so if you go to again the golf course lawn store it's not only about selling you guys stuff we also try and educate and have some tips and tricks that'll um help you in your lawn care journey so if you go to the blog and if you scroll down, the very first post, the new one today is Monkey Backyard Solutions, How to Help uh, Drainage for Lawn. So if you want something cool to read, it's a fun read about the causes of poor drainage, um, things you can do to, to help, you know, aeration is one of those things and, and, and a few others. Uh, there's a video that I did on aeration if you want some tips on that and just some other, other, other guidance that I find helps with improving the drainage in your lawn. So check that out, you know, share it with friends, family, anyone that, that has like issues with standing water in the lawn. So I think you will find uh, some value in that. So don't, all, I mean, the, I appreciate you guys watching the videos, but on the blog, on the store, on the blog, we're trying to put content out, trying to write an article at least once a week if I can um, to, to uh, you know, to, to offer another avenue for you guys to be able to pick up uh, content or, and just learn some cool stuff if you are, if you so desire. Because not everyone likes video, right? Not everyone likes video. So there you go. So appreciate that, uh, LG. Appreciate the, the super chat again. Thanks, sir. And let me find where I left off. It's always the hardest part of doing this. Always the hardest part of, um, of doing this. All right. Um, I think we had no name. I think, uh, no, I think it's, it's here. Sea Hill is up. Yep. Where he says, a greeting salutations, Ron and Lawn Troopers. Happy Friday, waiting for some great content. I think we already answered that one. So where I left off was here was mazama blue he says um happy friday ron was going to do a soil test but i'm waiting for the soil to not be too saturated um as the rain affects the acidity uh yeah yeah that's that's, that's a good plan uh, mazama so yeah wait for it to dry out you still got time i mean you figure you're not going to really start fertilizing feeding the lawn until again i think you're up north I, if i if memory serves me i think you're you're um you're in the northern part of the country so you are um you know, you're, you, you still got time as far as applying your fertilizer, but if it dries out over the next day or so, day or two, and you want to get your, your soil test done, then you're not going to be fertilizing until in your case, if, if I remember where you were in the country, not, not till well into March, well, well into March. So you got time. So, so get that done. You know, once the, um, you know, the lawn drains out a little bit, dries out a bit and, uh, and yeah, but the good thing is that it's on your plan. It's on your things to do. Again, I, I like to do a soil test every spring, spring and fall, um, mainly because you look at the price of fertilizer, the price of a lot of the products has gone up. It's got stuff that's not inexpensive. So you want to make sure that when you're going out and you're spending your hard-earned money, 
on products for your lawn that you're buying products that fit what the soil needs. And that's, that's why I'm such a big fan. Like this is literally like some of the best $30 that you'll spend on your lawn. These are not that expensive for what you get out of them. And it, it really takes the guesswork out of getting a good result in your lawn as far as your, your feeding program goes. So good plan, uh, Mazama, good plan. All right, next up is um, uh, Rob Will, uh, John Rob Will. He says, let's get those likes up. Uh, the algorithm needs this. It does, man. Yeah, definitely, guys. If you guys are just, just joining the live stream and if you're getting some value out of it, definitely hit the like button. It costs you absolutely nothing and is a great way to send good vibes to the YouTube algorithm and send more folks our way. Next up is DeAndre Wright just saying, what's up? What's going on, DeAndre? Thanks for coming to stop by and say uh, hello. And then we have Higgy Pop. This is a good one. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. I'm seeing people burning Bermuda lawns instead of scalping. What are your thoughts on, on this? Um, let's see. So as far as um, burning your lawn, I a friend of mine did it. Like uh, if you guys look at some of my older content from, it's probably probably been four years at this point, uh, a buddy of mine, Lee, the, the video that I did where we were, where we were um, using a rotary mower on his lawn, um, he did that. He burned his lawn. He set his lawn on fire and he got a good result, right? I mean, it's a, it's a, I'm not saying there's nothing, anything necessarily wrong with it, but in most, I don't recommend that for a couple of reasons. One, I don't want you to, to, to accidentally like burn your house down or burn things or burn the neighbor's lawn. That's thing one. Um, and most house associations, most HOAs, uh, don't allow you to do that. So if you have your own property off somewhere in the country or just where you have your own place and you have a way to safely do it, and you want to do that as a way to not have to scalp, you can, but most people don't have the ability to do that. It's not like it's a negative. You're not, you are not, um, you're not harming the grass from doing from by, uh, by, by burning it. Like uh, his lawn came back and it looked, it looked great. Right. But you can achieve the same thing, similar things from scalping. Now, some people will say that, um, like, you know, you're, you're, you're burning the grass and that you're, it's a, it's an inexpensive way to put some carbon into the soil, which again, sure. But again, it's most places you're not you're not allowed to do that. And I mean, you don't want the fire department, police showing up if you you know if your your lawn's on fire because you did something that you're not supposed to do. So, for those reasons, I I don't really recommend it to people because if you you know if you can do it, if you know if you can do it, you already know you can, and you and you don't really need my my thoughts on the matter. If you happen to be that small percentage of people that live somewhere where that's not going to get you in trouble, um, there's not really any negatives to doing it. There's people that again, I've, I, I've there's um, Lee, my friend that, that that did that, like that was his dad's regimen. Every year, that's how he he would start the season. He would he would he would um you know burn the lawn like that was his way to clean it out. And it's it it just saves you from not having to do all the the hard work of scalping. But um again, most you can't do it, so I'd recommend not doing it because I don't want you guys to get to get in trouble. So there is that. But yeah, I I know what you're saying. Um, but I'm not gonna do it. Can you imagine? I set my lawn on fire. Good grief. It spreads into the other neighbor's lawn. It's a great way to uh, to not to not win uh, to not to get the wrong kind of attention. How about that? To get the kind of attention you do not want. <laughs> All right, we got Robert Rainey up next. He says, "Good evening, everyone." And LG, I know I forgot your Tango Bolero. I will play it for you. I promise. I'll get some here in a second once I drink take a drink of my uh, my lemonade here in a minute. Thanks, Robert. Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you. And then uh, uh, Gene, the lawn brook says, hey, Ron and all, thank God it's Friday. Yeah, it's a good week. It's been a good week. It's been a wet week, if you, especially if you're in the Southeast. But uh, but yeah, it's getting close, guys. And now, as far as um, doing the my pre-emergent, my plan for that, weather permitting, again, you know, that's, I always got to put that qualifier in there. Weather permitting is to live stream it for you guys. Because I, 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 um, I asked about that last week and then other people in some of the comments have said, yeah, we want to see if you, if you don't mind to do it live. So I will do that. So what I'll do is I will, I'm going to mix it up and talk about how my process is for doing it. Kind of like what you already saw in the video that I released last week, but just me doing it like live. And for cool season folks, I will look up the rates for, um, for your grass types and I will speak to that but I'm not gonna obviously mix it at cool season grass rates because I don't have cool season grass. So I wanna make sure everyone is included. I don't want anyone to feel left out, you know, all you cool season folks. So uh, so, so look forward to that. Uh, again, key, key disclaimer, weather permitting, right? So I'm not gonna have all my camera gear and everything out there if it's uh, if it's raining or it's gonna chance of rain. But uh, but yeah, it was, it was fun last year when we did that in the fall. So we'll do it again this spring, why not? All right, BMH is up next. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. I plan to do my pre-emergent tomorrow. I saw the lawn services doing it around my neighborhood already. Yeah, so same thing. I went to um, I went to the Chick-fil-A today for lunch to grab a bike. 
And when I, because I like, here's the thing, I, I, whenever I do go out and around, around lunchtime just to, you know, get away from the front of a computer for a little while, and I do drive through the neighborhood and see what's going on. And there were, there were two trucks, two different lawn services, not just one, two different lawn services that were um, spraying pre-emergent. They're spraying prediamine, I could tell, because you could see the, the yellow, the yellow shower of, uh, of pre-emergent coming out. So they were spraying pr prediamine on lawns. So, uh, so yeah, in this area in, in Northeast Georgia, uh, the services are already putting out their pre-emergent. If I didn't have to go out of town um, for for that trip tomorrow, then I would be getting mine down tomorrow. So I'll have to wait a week, and uh, I think I think we'll be just fine. That that spectacle flow from the last fall is still doing its thing. So I'm 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 good. I'm good. But yes, yeah, it's a good job, VMH. Good job getting your pre-emergent down. It is a um, a bit early is better than a little bit late. I will stand by that. I will stand by that. All right, next up we got uh, Jake32201 saying, hey everyone, what's going on Jake? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream, sir. Appreciate you. I want to appreciate, appreciate you as always. And then next up is Gloria White. She says, just want to know how to, how to tackle a yard full of weeds before they grow. Help. Great question, Gloria. So, okay, so you said how to, to, to um, tackle a lawn full of weeds before they grow. So if your lawn doesn't have weeds yet, uh, the best way to prevent weeds in your lawn is to use um, pre-emergent. So pre-emergent is a specialized herbicide. It's a special type of weed killer um, in layman's terms that has a, that, that its its job is, for, is to prevent the weeds from germinating or growing in the first place. So you ever look at your neighbor's lawns and you look like, man, a lot of the, my neighbors, they never seem to have weeds in their lawn. The way they're doing that more than likely is because they're using pre-emergent. They may not be doing it, but the service they're paying to take care of their lawns are applying that. So pre-emergent comes in a couple of different forms. You can get it in a granular. So something, all you, all you need to apply it is like a, a broadcast spreader, like your Scott spreader or an Earthway spreader, or it comes in liquid forms. Now out of the two, liquids give you more flexibility as far as like the application rate, or if you want to mix other products with it. So let's say for example, right? You said, you, um, you said, hey, Ron, look at my lawn. It's good. My, uh, my existing lawn has a lot of weeds in it. And I also want to prevent weeds over the spring and summer. That is a situation where a liquid going the liquid route it was kind of was has some advantages because you could do your pre-emergent, which is this is a good example. I happen to have one right here. Imagine that. Um, this is prediamine. This on Bermuda will treat six thousand square feet thereabouts at the higher end of the application uh, limit for prediamine. So you could take this. You could take your pre-emergent. So this is the weed preventer, and then you could mix with it. Um, two herbicides, which are called post-emergent herbicides. We're talking about two different terms here, pre-emergent, prior to the weeds germinating, and then post-emergent herbicides. So post them being around and making a mess and irritating you. Um, these herbicides here, so Celsius and Certainty, this is a good blend that will kill weeds that are already in your lawn. So the pre-emergent prevents them. So it prevents weeds like crabgrass, spurge, uh, there's a whole there's a whole host of weeds. Those are the most common ones that we have to deal with in warm season lawn. Um, but this this will prevent those. And then if you if your your lawn is currently a salad bowl, um, Celsius is a herbicide that takes care of a, primarily uh, broadleaf weeds. Does some grassy weeds too. And then Certainty is a herbicide that takes care of Poannua, which is something that a weed that we will commonly have. In, in our lawns this time of year, as well as sedges. So if you ever notice like when, during the middle of um, like the growing season, when the weather gets hotter, if you have any spots on your lawn where water runs, like you have like a, a downspout and there's a lot of water that runs past there, there's a, um, it's a, it's a fine leafed weed. It looks, looks almost like grass. It's like a really bright colored grass that looks like, actually I can actually show you here what it looks like. It looks like, um, like this. This is a, um, these are sedges. This is like nut sedge. I think in this, in this window, in this one here, I've got like yellow sedge. Yeah, so it, look, it looks something like that. So there's different types of it. Um, there's like yellow nut sedge, there's green nut sedge, there's um, globe sedge, but, they, but the point is that this, partic this herbicide, uh, Certainty, is the Mac Daddy. This is the bees and knees for that. So if you, if you are looking for a combination to, prevent weeds in the spring and summer, you could take prediamine and then you could take Celsius and certainty and you could put all three of these together and apply them um, and apply them all at once. You know, you could apply them all at once. The, the, the thing that I would say is that if you decide you're gonna do that um, is you would wanna wait a day before you water this in. So typically when it comes to using uh, prediamine, the, the way pre-emergence work is they need to get down into the soil for them to work. So the the the, the way the method of application is you apply them, 
water them in, wait, and then happy days, right? No weeds in your lawn. But when we're mixing products like this, like uh, post-emergent herbicides, like these guys along with this, these work by sticking to the grass leaf, to the weed leaf, right? So the, so, so the weed or the plant or the, 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 the pest that we're trying to target, this needs to get on them and it needs to dry on them from, for them to work. So if you're mixing all these together, what you would do is you'd apply it and then wait a day or so and then you can run your irrigation to, to water the, the pre-emergent in. That's, that's a way to be able to do your post-emergent and pre-emergent and, and still get a, a fairly good result. So that is one way to go. Another option is if you said, you know what, I, mixing all this stuff, too much work. I don't wanna, I don't wanna deal with that. That's too, that's too hard, it's my first time around. You're scaring me, it's just too much headache, too hard. So what you could do then is you could go with a granular for your pre-emergent. So if we go over here to the golf course lawn store, I'll show you how I got there. You go to shop, weed killer, and then on the left side here, you just click on the pre-emergent filter and you can pick um, prodiamine in granular forms. You can just get this as a granular. Again, just use your spreader to put that down. And then you could go with something like, um, like spectricide or triad. Like spectricide you could find at your big box store. Um, and that's that's easier. So if you're looking for an, like the, the easy route, the easiest way to go, then I would say uh, prodiamine and granular, and then go to like you know your Home Depot big box store or whatever, and get yourself a bottle of, of Spectricide. It looks something. If I can find it here, so I can find a bottle for you and show you what it looks like, and get something like that and use that as your post emergent. It is not as good as this combination. Like this is better. This is superior. But then you're talking about you know professional level, uh, professional grade herbicides that are going to do a much better job. But if, if you're looking for something that's easy, especially if it's your first time around, you can, you know, you could just go a granular for your pre-emergent and then get like a um, a liquid post-emergent herbicide like Spectricide, and that's going to get you ahead of the game, right? It's going to, you may have to do a couple of applications of Spectricide to get a, uh, to get a good result, but it's, uh, but that, that can work too. That can work too. And I'm going to find here really quick for you. Um a uh what that looks like so if you can know what you need to get and i'm and i'm answering this question gloria as if you have warm season grass if you have um it will actually spectra will work on both so, so so we're good either we're good either way so what i'm talking about is this product here so if you go to any of your big box stores walmart um home depot any of them they will all have this if you have bermuda zoysia um let me think, Bermuda, Zoysia, and then some cool season grass. I think rye, this is also fine for, and Kentucky bluegrass, you can use the orange bottle. If you have uh, a St. Augustine lawn or a centipede lawn, you need to use a bottle that's purple. So it sells from Spectricide, but the bottle needs to be purple instead of um, instead of orange. So hope that helps, kind of a long answer, um, but uh, but yeah, so big thing is pre-emergent. If you do if you do nothing else, get pre-emergent down on your lawn because that's going to to break the cycle, break the chain of like new weeds germinating once the weather gets warm here in not too long from now. So hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know. All right. Next up is Robert Rainey. I think wait, do we have another super chat that I need to go grab? I think we do. So we have another super chat. Let me go get down here and grab that really quick. I want to make sure I'm taking care of that for Mr. Career Choices. Thank you so much, sir. Super chat received. Appreciate all the love and support and while I make a mess of trying to figure out where I left off. I will put on some Tango Bolero for LG because I owed him that and find the next question. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Got it. All right. So next up we have Robert Rainey, where he says, uh, storage room here smells like the sweet fragrance of Essential G. Uh, yeah, man, I hear you. Yeah, so that's a good point. So guys, the um, initial order we got of Essential G, all those have gone out. A lot of, most of it should have already been delivered by now. I was looking at stock, like inventory. I believe we have like, like a, we have not that much left. I think it's like nine or nine or 10 bags of it left currently. There's already another a big box, a big um, delivery or shipment on its way in. So um, right now what's in stock is if you, if you can still order it, we still have it. And then what will happen is once that runs out, I will switch it to pre-order and it'll be, there'll be all, there'll be a big text and the button, instead of it saying add to cart, it'll just be the big button that says pre-order on it. So you'll know that if you are picking, if you're deciding to get it um, ahead of time, you're not going to get like tracking information until mid-February. So, so there is that. But yeah, if we still have it in stock, if you can still order it, 
if you, in other words, if you can still order it now, it is still in stock. So the, and there's not that much of it left. So if you want to get your essential G and just you know at least to get your your batch to to start the season, uh, go ahead and 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 pick that up because if not, you'll have to wait till like mid February, which is not that long, but it's something to keep in mind. But I'm glad that it made it to you, Robert, and everyone else that that made your orders. You guys should all have your stuff, which is great. And uh, and there's more incoming. There's more incoming. All right, let's see here. Rob, John Rob Wills has a good question. He says, does release zero function the same way as other wedding agents such as Air 8? No, not really. So release zero is not, is not, re- is not a wedding agent. It is um, a combination of um, micronized carbon. So if you take, if you think about the, the biochar that's in Essential G or Carbon Pro G, imagine that micronized and in liquid form, 10% of what's in release zero. And I can show you guys, because some of you may not know what he's talking about. 10% of what's in release zero um, is that. So if you go to the shop, Miramichi Green Biosimilants, and then here, this is the product that he's talking about. So it is, it's 10% micronized carbon. It also has um, biology, other, other, um, other um, uh, nutrients for your soil. What it, what it does, the best way to describe release zero and also 901C is that, is that it's, it helps improve nutrient uptake. So if you're mixing fertilizer with it, your fertilizer will work better. If you're use, mixing it with herbicide, herbicide will work, it, the effectiveness you will get with it will be better. So in other words, I've, I've mixed release zero with Celsius. I've mixed release zero with, uh, with certainty. The only thing that, um, that I, I typically don't mix it with is like fungicides because I do that a lot because whenever I'm applying fungicide, I'm also applying um, biospectrum, which is like a, um, a, a microbial package. And the fungicide is, is basically tries to destroy that, tries to kill that. So I don't, I, the only thing I don't mix release zero with, I'm uh, mainly because I do this, this and biospectrum all at the same time. So these three, these three guys, I do them. I tend to do them all um, in, the, in a batch together. Is fungicides. So you could think of it as a, as um, as a catalyst that helps anything that you mix that you mix it with to work better. It is not like um, like aerate or like um, like the like any kind of molasses product or anything like that. It's a it's a completely it's a completely different thing. It's its own thing. Um, if you want to be able to try it out, a great way to do that and save yourself a bit of money is to get the carbon kit because that way you're able to get release zero. Nutri Kelp, which is a 24% kelp product, and then Biospectrum, which is that microbial package that I was telling you about, um, that I also mix as well. And you have an option of just using Release Zero or doing the version with 901C in it, which is the same thing as Release Zero, but except for fertilizer. So if you don't want to use like a liquid fertilizer, this version has fertilizer mixed in with it. So it saves you from going to use a liquid fert if you want to do that. But yeah, it's completely, it's completely different. It's not, it's not a wedding, it's not a wedding agent like um like how hydrotain is or some of the other other products it's, it's it's its own thing it's its own thing its own its own um it's its own thing it's the best way it's the best way to describe it and uh, you think about it like a lot of um if you look at how how I fertilize my lawn right you guys know that the rates that I use on my nitrogen inputs and just my nutrient inputs in general tend to be on the lower side so in general the 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 um general thinking is that Bermuda needs about a pound of nitrogen per month throughout the growing season, whenever it's actively growing. I don't get anywhere near that on my lawn. I, I bias more towards like the 0. 0.7, 0. 0.7 pounds of nitrogen. Some months I've, I even do less than that. And the reason why I'm able to get away with that and still have a great looking lawn where you don't have too much too much growth, I reduce the chance of having um, you know disease problems um, is because of the biostimulants like Release Zero, like Nutri Kelp that I mix along with my fertilizers because I'm able to get, in other words, you're able to get more out of out of the, the products that you put into your lawn. So that's why I love it. Ever since I started using them, I've I've never stopped. It's just it's a great it's a great great product, which is partly why it's a big part of why I partnered with Miramichi Green to to be able to bring them to you guys. So like that's why this kit, the one I'm showing you here, the carbon kit. Like the only place to really get that is the golf course lawn store because this is something that I, I worked with, with Miramichi to be able to put together because I said, hey, listen, you know, like Nutri Kelp or and Release Zero and Biospectrum by themselves are 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 kind of expensive for someone that's never tried them before. So this is a way for you to to, to try it out, try them out. You're gonna love the results, and then you can buy a gallon of each of them if you want to. Or if you have a smaller lawn, you can just continue just to use the kit. So those are both. Uh, that that was the idea behind that. So. Hope that helps, uh, John Rob Will. No, it is not like a, like other wedding agents. It is its own thing. It is its own thing. Say hi to some of the folks here in the gram. We got Brandon Tucker. We got some other folks here. E.E. E. Williams, Don, 
all coming to hang out in the live stream. DDOM, what's going on, guys? Thanks for coming to hang out in the uh, live stream on, on the gram. Appreciate you. And next up is Archie Amos. He says, evening, young man. So I have to read Archie's comment because I think that's how he, if he were here, I think that's how he would say it. He says, evening, young man. I'll be placing my order before the end of the sale. Won't be in South Carolina till the 7th and I don't want to order too early. I hear you, Archie, no problem. Yeah, so the so what he's also talking about is the, the sale on Humic Max um, as a way to, you know, to say thank you for your patience because I didn't expect Humic Max to show up until middle of February, but we got it like two weeks earlier um, as a way to, to, to say, hey, if you want to pre-order it and to say thank you for your patience, take 5% off. And also as a way to say, hey, you didn't get a Black Friday sale, here's like 5% off. Um, that's why I did that, but doesn't mean that people that didn't pre-order should be penalized too, right? So that's why the, the if you want to save 5% on Humic Max, you have until the end of this month, end of January, to get to get your order in. It's only on Humic Max. I don't want to hear any complaints like when, you know, April rolls around saying, oh, I can, there's no discounts, what's going on? I'm like, hey, you should have been watching the show and live stream in January. That's when I did it, so. So there you go. But yeah, Archie, definitely take advantage of that. Load up. There's no limits on how much you want to buy. So if you want to look stock up for the season, by all means. By all means, after the in February 1st, it goes back to the normal price and will be there for the season. So take advantage of it. All right, next up is Christopher Dukes says, What's up, Ron? Not too much. Not too much. Lawn's dried out. I'm happy about that. I'm happy about that. And uh yeah, looking forward to the season, man. Looking forward to kicking things off and getting things going. You know, a lot of a lot of, I'm getting questions from you guys around pre-emergence and soul testing, which is good. It makes me happy. This warms my heart. Because uh, it shows that, you know, you're really putting thoughts into to making good decisions to, to make your life easier throughout the rest of the season. You know what I mean? If you don't do pre-emergent, like, like battling weeds is expensive. It's expensive and it's time consuming, you know? So get your bag, get your bag of pre-emergent, get it down, and, uh, and then happy days uh, going forward. Mark Romero, what's going on? Aloha, uh, Mark. Thanks. Thank you so much again, sir, for the correspondence and appreciate the, uh, the support. So thank you so much for coming and also hang out here from the great state of Hawaii. And then next up, we got No Name saying, also, smash those likes. Thank you, uh, um, No Name. I think you're gonna have to be the uh, the official like likes cheerleader, because every week when you're here, you're always about, hey, get, get your likes on. We know Ron, Ron needs the love and support. Let's make sure we make that happen. So I appreciate you um, for, for doing that. We got Darren Proctor saying, hey, Ron and everyone, and Papa Mo's low. This is soil test question. All right, should be good. Did one in October and the lawn didn't need anything. Is there a need to do another one before April or May? Not really, not really. I mean, if, if you want to, you can. Uh, if you're, the big thing I look for, I'll tell you Papa Moslo, the, thing, the biggest thing I look for in my fall soil test is where my pH is. Because by seeing where, where my, um, my pH is, I have, I have adequate time between you know, October timeframe until March to be able to try and correct that. You know what I mean? So if you're happy with how you close out the season, and, um, and you just want to take where you left off and just keep running that program going forward, like the same um, nutrient makeup. If you want to do that, you absolutely can. I mean, I'm still going to do one, but I mean, it's, if, you, if you don't want to, you want to save 30 bucks and just, you know, say, hey, I'm, I think I'm good with where, where things were and what I used last year, like the results I got. You can absolutely repeat that uh, going forward. Big thing is if your pH is, the big thing I look for is your pH. If that, if that was fine and you want to, um, to use the same program or similar program that you did last year, I don't think you will have a, um, you're not going to get a negative result from that. So. Good, good question. And if you're going to do one, I would do it. If you say you are going to do a spring test, I would not wait till April, May. I would do one like this next month because the idea behind it is to know, is to know um, like what, what fertilizers, what, what, like what blends or what should be using for the upcoming season. And you might start feeding your lawn. I'm not sure, depending on where you are, you might be feeding your lawn like in late March, early April, just depending on where you are in the country. So I would do it prior to then, you know what I mean? So if you're going to do one, May, in my opinion, like May would be, I wasn't necessarily too late, but you're not really then doing a soil test to see like what, what you should, how you should be doing your fertilization program for this season. Cause you're already in it. You, you, knowing you, you already like, there's no way that you, that May is going to reach and you have not put fertilizer in your lawn yet. I know you, I know you, we, this, we know each other. So if, if it's just to be able to say, hey, I want to measure and see like where my levels are based on the one or two apps that I've already done, and that's your goal for the May app or the May test, then by all means. But if it's to, to, to figure out what you're going to do this season, I would do it earlier. So hope that helps, sir. Great question. I like, I like questions about soil testing. 
All right, next up, we got a super chat here from Mr. John Rob Will. Thank you so much, John. Super chat for Steve. He says, thank you. You're very, very welcome, John Rob Will. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate the support as I scroll back up and try and find out where I left off, which I did. LG. Hey, hey LG, what's going on, man? And then DeAndre, DeAndre Wright saying, uh, saying, saying, waving, saying hi. What's going on, DeAndre? Next up is Tunder. He says... I live in North Central Florida. When I when can I start seeding St. Augustine or Bermuda? Okay, so first thing I would say is this: um, if you are going to, if you're trying to establish a new lawn, right? So if you're going to do a new lawn um, and you're deciding between St. Augustine or Bermuda, I mean, I I hate, I'm kind of biased. I'm going to try and tell you to get Bermuda because you, you can make Bermuda look pretty awesome. I mean, I'm not saying Augustine can't look awesome, but you can't really get that that golf course lawn, that, that really tight look, if that's what you want with St. Augustine. But I'm not saying St. Augustine is not a great grass. It looks great. Alan does a great job with it. I mean, people in Florida love St. Augustine lawns. It's, it's, it's probably more popular um, than Bermuda in, in Florida. It's a really popular um, grass type there. Regardless of which way you go, I would encourage you to, to establish it via sod. Like it is so much easier to establish a new lawn via sod than going the seeded route. I mean, even if you do all your prep work, you do a great job on it, it's unlikely that the entire lawn is going to grow in evenly. It takes a lot of water to to get uh, to establish a lawn from seed. Um, and it's just, again, it's just, it's just a lot of work. And, and I don't know that the um, that the the that, that it's really necessarily worth it for most people. I think where, where seed makes sense is if you have a really large property, let's say you've got, I don't know, 20,000 square feet or, or more, right? Like doing that all in sod is going to be kind of cost, it's going to be cost prohibitive. So that's a situation where, Hey, I'm just going to try and I'm going to get it, try and I'm going to try and get it to grow in. Um, if it takes, it takes, uh, and, and, you know, I realize it's going to be an ongoing process. That's where seed can make sense. But for most lawns, smaller lawns, you know, 15,000 square feet or less to, you know, on the, on the smaller side of lawns, sod is going to get you a better result faster and it's going to be more consistent. So that would be, that would be, um, my recommendation. Now, Having said all that, that's not what you asked me. You asked me when should I do seed. So as far as um, Bermuda grass seed, I've never actually done St. Augustine from grass from from seed, so I can't actually tell you if its if its requirements are different. But for Bermuda, you want to apply you want to um, um, sow Bermuda grass seed when the average soil temps are in the mid 60s. So mid 60s trending up, that's when that's the time when when um, um, putting applying sowing Bermuda grass seed, you tend to get a, a good result. In Northeast Georgia, that is the May time frame. So, like in May, Mayish time frame, that's when you can uh, sow Bermuda grass seed, and you'll again, assuming you got the water to be able to do it, you can grow it from seed and and get a you know a reasonable result, um, a, a, a getting a lawn going that way. With you being in Florida, it's probably I mean you can you can likely get started perhaps a bit earlier because it's going to be warmer there. But again, I would I would I would almost beg you to to, to really consider going with sod for your new lawn versus seed. It's going to be a lot less headache, a lot less expensive from a standpoint of watering and headache. And you're just going to, you're going to like, you're going to like the result. Cause literally you're going to walk out there one day before and your lawn, it's going to be all bare. Like there's whatever your lawn looks like now. And I'm sure you can do prep, right? You're going to kill off whatever you have, ex your existing, um, your existing grass. And then they're going to come in, they're going to put the lay sod down and then you've got a lawn, right? And all there is then is just to put some water on it and let it get established and, and, and Four weeks, like less than a month later, you're mowing it and you're, you know, you're enjoying life. So that is the way I would go if it were me. But if you are so bent on doing seed, soil temps, mid 60s, trending up is when, uh, when I would do it. But uh, hopefully I've done a good job trying to convince you uh, away from that. Appreciate the question. All right, next up is Robert Rainey. He says, I'm going to give the stress 12 year 24 Lebanon a go to start the season. Thoughts on when to start? Uh, so... I would say, um, depends on where you are, Robert. I know you're in Alabama, and it depends on what the temperatures and what the weather is um, is looking like in mid-March time frame. I would want to see the lawn starting to green up some, right? I I'd want to see some green on the lawn. The 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 um, the, the telltale sign that I use is if you have the green fuzz, and now that's not really a technical term, but when you start seeing that there's like a, there's, there's, there's green starting to be spread throughout the lawn where it's starting to wake up. If you want to begin feeding it, like with that 12 zero 24, that's a great option. Again, it's, there's, there's quite a bit of slow release in that. So it's, um, it's a good, it's a good gentle way to, to wake the lawn up for the, to, um, you know, to start the season out. So as far as giving you an actual time to say, you know, the 
March 15th or March 1st. It's difficult to do that because it depends on what the weather is like that time of year. So I, I would say look at the lawn when it's beginning to wake up. You're starting to see some green starting to come throughout the lawn. That's a good time to you know to feed it with a higher potassium for it. Let it you know give it give it something to to to, to kickstart it and uh, and away you go. So I'd say look at what the look at how the lawn looks and use that as your gauge as to when to apply it versus just um just a date. In other words, it's not like pre-emergent. I mean, if you do it a little bit early, not going to hurt anything. Pre-emergent, I feel fairly comfortable telling you if you live in the Southeast United States, um, you know, February is a good time. Like the, 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 the beginning to mid-February is a good time to get your pre-emergent down. If you do that, you're going to get a good result with it because it's going to be before soil temps on average are where they would need to be for crabgrass and other um, problem children to begin germinating. With fertilizer, you know, do you, you want to really wait until you're getting closer to the point where the grass is beginning to green up before you begin feeding it. So hope that helps, sir. I would say mid, if, if last, if any, if years pass or anything like uh, this year, mid March time frame is is a good is a good um is a good time. But again, look at what, how the lawn is looking and then feed it based on that. Great question, great question. And again, you're in the key academy, so we'll you know, we'll, we'll chat we'll be chatting back and forth, and you know I'm sure you'll send me pictures of the lawn video, whatever you want to do, and then we, we'll uh, we'll be able to say yes. Now now is the time. It is now is the time to uh, to 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 start the madness. All right. Next up is Todd Hickey. He says, I'm in the market for a greens mower. I have the opportunity to purchase a 2015 Toro Greens Master with 720 hours. Pictures and the owner indicate very good condition. Cost is $4,000. Is this a good deal? That's a, for my taste, that's a bit high. That's a bit high, Todd, because here's why. So I got my Greens Master in it. I want to say it's a 2014, I think. These are 2014. I got mine as a 2014. It had... Uh, just under 200 hours. I had like 197 hours on it. So, so not much time on it. And I paid 3,500 for it. And then like another 350 or so for shipping. So right around four grand for, um, you know, a, a much lower hours mower. However, that was three, two, three years ago, two years ago, whatever, whatever that was. So, I mean, the cost of this stuff has gone up. So I'm sure, but at 700, 720 hours, I might see if you could if you can get a, a slightly better pricing on that. Now, if he's telling you, and, and mind you, with my mower, it was serviced for that too. So it was sharp and it was ready to cut, just ready to go for that price. Now I got a really good deal, and you know, maybe that, you know, that's not that's not common. But if it's if it's if you do end up going forward with that, I would I would want him to 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 be able to tell you that the mower was just freshly sharpened so that when you get it, literally it's good to go. Like like new drive belts, like on the side, there's these covers where there are um these um like a rubber a drive belt for the for the drum, each side of the drum. You'd want to have fresh one fresh belts in there and a fresh sharpen. Um and at that point, if you know if you're getting closer to that four grand number, okay. But it's it, for me, that's still a bit high for 720 hours, given what I have paid, right? Again, I may have just gotten a really sweet deal. But, um, but for me, that's, that's, it's, that's, that's, that's a bit high for that. Um, so hope that helps. Hope that helps. But again, I, I will tell you though, if you do decide to get it, you're not going to dislike the mower. It's a great mower. It cuts awesome. And, uh, you'll, you will love the results you get with it. Um, but it's just, it just, been, just depends on how much is your time worth to you and how much more time do you want to spend hunting for, you know, a slightly better deal. Like if it's, it's saving $500 or saving, you know, potentially a thousand dollars, is it, you know, how much is it, how much is your time worth as far as that goes? So just something to, to consider and, and think about. And if that, if that's nearby you where you, you're not paying for shipping, then that's something to consider as well too, right? And if you have to go pay, buy a $4,000 mower and then have it shipped, eh, not so great. But if it's like, you know, someone that's in your local town or, or they're going to bring it to you, that's, uh, you know, that's a more, that's a better, um, it's a better proposition. So just some things to consider. All right, next up we have JG. She says, happy Friday, y'all. Eight weeks till official spring. Yes, yes, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's, uh, you know, before you know it, we're gonna be out there mowing and, and wishing for times when we didn't have to be out. Um, we, we didn't have to, we could have just sat back on the live stream and just 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 uh, talked about the finer points of lawn care, not actually have to go out and do it. But soon the time is coming, it is coming. All right, next up is Jake32201. He has a question now. He says, hey, Ron, I plan on using plant growth regulator, but I'm also going to do some leveling in May. So how or when should I apply the PGR? Okay, so if you apply growth regulator, I've done it both ways. The, the short answer is if you don't apply growth regulator, your lawn's going to recover faster from top dressing. You didn't need me to tell you that because it makes sense, right? Like, like PGR, Primo Max, 
is going to slow down how quickly your lawn, like top growth, how quickly your lawn, the grass grows up. So it is gonna slow down how quickly it recovers from top dressing. Having said that, the last, I'm trying to think, the last three plus years that I've top dressed my lawn, it's been under regulation every single time. Like it's been, it's been, it's had Primo, it's been under plant growth regulator when I did that. Um, so what I would say this, if it's your first time doing it, if it's your first time doing it, uh, wait on the PGR, go ahead and do your, your top dressing so that way you can get the lawn to recover as, as quickly as possible. Once it's done, once it's beginning to grow through, then you can um, use Primo. Again, it's it's not gonna hurt if you do it before, it's just gonna take longer for it to recover. You know what I mean? So uh, so it just it really depends on you. You're not committing some cardinal sin if you do if your your lawn is under regulation and you top dress it, especially if you do it the way that I recommend, which is to go light. You know, don't get out there and, and like sand cap the lawn. Don't go out there and beach the entire lawn where all you're seeing is sand. If you're doing that, then I mean I just wouldn't recommend doing that. But if you're going to do that, then absolutely don't do PGR because it's going to take forever and a day to recover. Um, but if you're doing a quarter of an inch to half an inch to where if you look through the lawn, look at the lawn after it's been top dressed, there are some areas where grass is sticking through and you can, you know, you can see some, a few areas are a little bit heavier, but overall it's a light top dressing. It's really your call. It will recover faster if you don't um, have it under regulation um, when you top dress. Now, as far as how to apply it, the way I like to do it is the, um, with, with Primo, what's the nice thing about this is that Syngenta in this in the four ounce bottle has incorporated a, a, um, a measuring container, a measuring cup. So those of you guys on the gram, you can see that as well too. There's a fancy little measuring cup built into this as well too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer this as if you have Bermuda grass, because that's what I'm familiar with and I've got all those numbers memorized. So that's what, we're gonna, that's what I'm gonna give you. So if you have a Bermuda grass lawn, the rate for hybrid Bermuda is a quarter of an ounce, so 0.25 fluid ounces. So between the two and the three, if I can get this to focus, between the two and the three, that's actually a bit too much. I'm gonna take some of this out. Uh, so about, so I can do this live, about right, uh, about right there. That's about, that's what would you, you would apply. You would mix with one gallon of water. So this much with one gallon of water and you would spray that over a thousand square feet. So what that means, if you have a four gallon backpack sprayer, you would you would take an ounce of Primo Max, mix it with four gallons of water, and that is enough for um, three to four weeks of regulation. However, while that is one way of doing it, what, what I will tell you, and it's, it's really up to you whether you, know, you want to, to have to go out there twice in a month, what I have found that produces a an excellent result with none of the negatives, because here, here's one of the negatives, we can talk about this a little bit. The, one of the negatives of doing a full rate application of Primo Max, so which for Bermuda, again, quarter of an ounce um, per thousand square feet, is that a couple of days after you spray the lawn with Primo, you, you will likely get a little bit of tip burn to where, and by that I mean like a little bit of um, like yellow haze. So if the lawn was like a really nice vibrant green, It'll look, it'll look like um, just a little bit less green. It'll look like a, like just, a, it'll look just like a, a bit washed out in color a bit, right? When you mow it, the first time you mow it after that, it's going to go away because you're going to cut basically the, the, the burn tips off and you're good, you're good to go. If you want to prevent that, so you say, hey, you know what? I don't even want that in the first place. The way, what you can do is you can break your application, your monthly um, allocation of Primo up into two, two apps. So if we, what I just told you as far as one ounce with four gallons of water over a thousand square feet, we can take that and cut it in half. So what we can do is on the, on the first of the month, say the beginning of um, say May 1st, you can take half an ounce, which is in half the, the what you would use over the course of a month uh, as far as rate goes. So half an ounce, mix with the same four gallons of water and apply that over 4,000 square feet. And then on the 15th, you do the same thing again. Half an ounce of Primo mixed with four gallons of water over the 4,000 square feet. The nice thing you're gonna get about that, with doing it that way, is you're not gonna get any tip burn from doing it. You're still gonna get great regulation. Um, and it's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're out there anyway spraying your lawn, so if you're using like liquid fertilizer with it or anything like that, then it's, if you're gonna be out there anyway, then why not, why not just break the application up into, into two, um, to two, different, two different apps, you know what I mean? What you'll find too is by breaking it up into two, like on every two week intervals throughout the growing season, like the lawn, chances of it coming out of regulation are are reduced. Like if the chance of it, of it um, you know, the, the primo, the, the growth regulator wearing off and you're getting this big flush of growth, like that's not gonna happen if you're doing it every two weeks. So if, you, if you're fine with that, if you're fine with being out in the lawn on the first and on, on the 15th, then what I would say is four gallons of water, half an ounce, so 0.5 ounces, 
with four gallons of water and you spray that over 4,000 square feet. If you got an 8,000 square foot lawn, you just do it twice, right? So you do one backpack sprayer, spray over 4,000 square feet, mix another batch and do it again, right? So that, that's how I would say to do it. Um, what I also like to do as well whenever I'm applying Primo is I um, will apply my biostimulant package. So like um, uh, really zero Nutri-Kelp and um, Biospectrum along with a liquid fertilizer. You don't necessarily, you don't have to do that, but I'm out there anyway. So I'm like, why not? You know, I, I, all the stuff mixes together. It all plays nicely together. So I do it all at once. So if I'm gonna show you what I do as far as um, growth regulator, uh, and you don't necessarily have to do the same thing, but this is the way I go about it, is you go to here. So if we go to the store and then you go to Miramichi Green Biostimulants. So I will take this, the carbon kit, which is these three products. It's really zero. Um, it is Nutri Kelp, so it's really zero, a kelp product, and a, uh, a a microbial package. So this, this, and this, and I will mix that along with Primo Max. We'll go over here to lawn fertilizer. So I'll mix those three with this. I got it here too. I could have just shown you here. So I take this, I mix this and this together, and I spray that twice a month, first and the fifteenth. So. Um, that is that is um, one way of of going about it. It's what I do, and I get a really good result. So hopefully that helps. When it I will tell you this too as well. When you look at how much that is, it's not going to look like very much. You can look at that small amount of, of growth regulator, and you're going to say there's no way that could absolutely work. I should go heavier, and I would beg you to not do that. Like go that half ounce rate, half ounce, four gallons of water, four thousand square feet. Um, um, is gonna is gonna be just fine. That's what I use on my lawn. That's what I tell the people in the Golf Course Lawn Academy to do, and they all have great results doing that. So hope that helps. Growth Regulator is lots of fun. The only bad thing about Growth Regulator is once you start using it, you will wonder why you waited so long and you won't be able to stop using it because the lawn looks awesome when it's under regulation. So hope that helps, uh, Jake. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, next up we have Michael Anger. He says, what are your thoughts on the Lesco uh, 1907 Dimension? Never used it, can't really say. It sounds like a, like a weed and feed type product. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the amount of nitrogen in it is a bit high for my taste for to be to be you know applying like in February. But, um, but it also depends on the makeup, right? If it's all slow release nitrogen then, or mostly slow release nitrogen, it could be fine. I, I can't speak to it um, because I've never used the product to be able to say, right? I've never actually even seen the label for it to know how that 19, like, like what kind of nitrogen they're putting into the, um, into the product, so. Can't say for sure. Dimension's great, like it's a great pre-emergent. So uh, so yeah, I mean, you can give that a go if you'd like, but I, I can't really say yay or nay um, So I've never actually used the product. I imagine it would probably be just fine though. I imagine it'd be fine. Okay, next is Lon Guido. He says, pre-emergent and, and weed killer at the same time in Spring, Texas. You can, you can. So if you have Weeds, so let's say the example that I, I, I answered earlier um, for Gloria, where if you if your lawn is such that you have active weeds in your lawn, so you've got some broadleaf in your lawn, some clover and some other stuff going on that you want to take care of, some poa, um, and you're going to put your pre-emergent down and you want to take care of the existing weeds and take care of um, weeds that are yet to come, like crabgrass, spurge, like your more warm season uh, type weeds, then yes, you can mix them together. You can do... You can do prediamine and then Celsius and certainty along with it. The only thing I would say is that I would not water it in immediately after, right? So that you know the, the, the way you people tell you to most way most people tell you to do pre-emergent would be apply it, water it in, like the, if you can do it the same day, fine. You know, water it in that evening, fine. But the idea is if you're mixing post-emergent herbicides with it, you want to give them the opportunity to dry on the weeds, on, on, on the, the weed that you're targeting. You know what I mean? So if you want to mix them all together, you can do that. Apply, uh, you know, go out and spray your lawn with it, and then um, you know, give it a day or two, and then water it in. If you're going to go that route, what I would say is, um, whereas with pre-emergent, normally you want to use like a flood jet tip, like this guy here, like one of these, the pre really large droplet. What you can do is, if you're, if you're trying to 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 get um, a better result with your post-emergent herbicides, is you can split the difference. So there's there's three spray tips that I have used on my lawn that I typically use, right? So I'll show, I'll run through that really quickly here with you, um, Lawn Guido. So you have the foliar tip, which this is really the best for when it comes to spraying um, any kind of foliar app. So fertilizer or even post-emergent herbicides. Like this is really what you wanna use. Not so great for pre-emergent though, right? And then the one that's really good for pre-emergent, but it's not so great for foliar apps is this guy, which is your flood jet tip. 
So in a situation where we're doing both of them, right? So we're doing, um, we're doing a post-emergent and a pre-emergent, what can we do that's kind of like, you know, splitting the difference? And what I have done is, is, is this, this spray tip here, which is an air induction tip. Now what this does is it produces a larger droplet size than the foliar tip, but not quite as big as what you get in the uh, the flood jet tip. So this is a good tip to go with if you're if you're going to try that concoction where you're going to do pre-emergent and then post-emergent along with it. Um, that is that is what I that's what I have done. That's what I used uh, last year when I helped. Um, yeah, it is last year. So I did last um, February on my neighbor next door when I was we were trying to clean up his lawn. So I used this. Uh, this air induction tip. Um, but normally this guy sits around and just, and just collects dust because it's really a, a, for me anyway, it's a specialty, it's a specialty use tip. I don't use that one typically. So hope that helps. Now, as far as where you can get those tips, I know it's the next thing you're gonna ask me, you're like, oh great, you showed me all these cool spray tips. Where can I get them? Um, and I think I've got links to all those here somewhere. Cause I put them all together. Cause I got asked that before. Uh, let's see. All year. Oh yeah, here we go. All three of them. Cool. So he, uh, you got all three of them listed here, Lon Guido. If you decide to go this route, so at Lon Guido, uh, and if I can type tonight, there you are. So there's all three. Um, and I apologize that it's not pacing that nice, but you can get the links and you can make that work. So those 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 three will um, will work well. If you have the Yard Mastery backpack sprayer, like the um, the one that we carry on the golf course lawn store, the only one you're really gonna need to buy is this guy. It's just the air induction tip because it comes with the foliar and the flood jet. So you only need one if you already have that sprayer. So hope that helps, sir. Um, if you need anything else, definitely let me know. Great question. All right, next up is... Uh, Quabina, see, she says, pronounce Quabina. Thank you. Thank you for helping me with that. Cause I get some of these names sometimes and I always butcher them. So you will not hurt my feelings if you, if you put a, um, you know, explain to me how to pronounce your name properly. So, so Quabina says, happy Friday. What are your thoughts on my first real mower? Price point, options, features, brands. I'm leaning towards a true cut. I need to figure out sharpening. Great question. Okay. So the, the thing I would say is this, the true cut is a great mower. I, I love mine. That was my first power real mower. Still have it, still love it. It's a great mower. The the thing I would say with a true cut is, and really for any real mower, is when it comes to um, choosing, find some, find out who in your area has familiarity with sharpening them. You know what I mean? So if you're, you know, as far as the maintenance, there's really not a lot of maintenance in a true cut. Really, the as long as you're putting, you get like a, a spray can of motorcycle chain lube. You spray that on the uh, on the chains. You know, once a month, every every few weeks, once a month, depending on on um on the conditions that you're mowing in, you do that and um, you hit your, your 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 grease points. It doesn't really take very much as far as that standpoint. But as far as sharpening it, you wanna find a place that is familiar with, with doing um, with doing true cut. So I'd find, if you're in the Northeast Georgia area, you're good. Like if you live around Atlanta, you're, there's, there's tons of places that can do it. So um, if that's you, then yeah, true cut's a great mower. The nice thing about that is that, about the true cut, is um, it's chain driven. So as far as stuff to wear out, it just, there just really isn't a lot to really go wrong with the mower. Um, if you put a grooved roller on it, it produces a very nice cut. And if you have a lawn that is sloped, then it's easier to use on a sloped lawn or like an uneven surfaces than like a greens mower is. So as far as like, you know, as far as like a, a, a good, I hate to say starter mower, but, but, but a, a good solid, powered real mower, it's hard to beat a true cut. They're really good. To, really to get better than a true cut, you're gonna have to start getting into something, a mower that has a rear drum, that's propelled by a rear drum. So something like a, a greens mower from like Toro or John Deere, or um, like what I've got here on the shelf here, back here, like an Allet, one of those, like that will produce a like nicer stripes. You're not gonna see the tire marks that you can get from a true cut. Uh, but but that aside, it's a it's a great mower. It's a great it's a great great mower. You're not you're not gonna you're not gonna dislike the the cut that you get with a uh, with a true cut. They're built like tanks too. You know you really you can't really hurt them either. So there's um there is that. So um, as far as price point, if you're going brand new, I I think you expect to pay between around twenty five hundred depending on which one you get and um, 
with the roller that it comes with. So there, if you can buy one brand new, expect to pay between twenty five hundred and three thousand thereabouts because the price on them has gone up. Pre owned, you should be able to get a pre owned one that's in in good shape um, with a fresh sharpen on it for under fifteen hundred dollars. So. So hope that helps. I think I got all your questions answered. True Cut's a great mower. I would just check to make sure that there's someone in your area that, that knows what a True Cut is and is familiar with sharpening it and then resetting the tolerance between the reel and the bed knife. Because with an, on a True Cut, that's a bit a bit trickier than it is like even like a Greens mower. It's harder to actually do it on a True Cut than it is on, on a Greens mower. So hope that helps. Uh, it's a good op good option. And uh, you, will, you will love the way your lawn looks when it's regularly reel mode. So... Uh, you know, let me know which way you end up going once you, uh, once you figure it out. Great question. We have another super chat. Uh, Luis is firing shots at LG. I like it. Taking super him down. Chat received. He says home late from work. I used Anderson's 0.48 barricade last year and got amazing. He didn't say good. Amazing results. Can you share your thoughts on comparisons to priming, uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.38? Thanks. Uh, it's the Anderson's has it's a higher concentration of prodiamine. I mean, if you if you apply if you apply either of them at the correct rates, like the rates are, are set out on the bag, you're going to get a good result. So I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, if you if you like the Anderson's product, if you used that last year, you had a good result with it, and you want to use it again, by all means, use it again. If you want to use the uh, the prodiamine, the um, the 0.38, that the granular that can work as well too. This is a 65, like um, so this in in the in the uh, water dispersible granule, and it's um, you know, it I would say as long as you as long as you're applying the product at the correct rates based on the label, you're gonna get a good result. So and if you like the Anderson's product, um, by all means, do uh, give that a shot if you want. Um, I can tell you that, that, that um, you know, the, the, um, the, the, prodiamine that we the prodiamine that we carry, uh, the 0.38, the one from Yard Mastery, but I got, you know, get great results with that, as well, with that as well too. So it just depends on which way you wanna go. So if you guys wanna see what that is, it's under the weed killer section and then under, uh, pre-emergent. So you've got um, prodiamine and pair. either one of those in granular and you got some liquid, but e either one will work for you. Will, can work well, uh, Luis. It's not like if you went from the um, 0.48 concentration to the 3.8 that you're not going to, you know, now I'm going to have a, a lawn full of weeds. It's not going to happen. As long as you apply it properly at the right rates, you water it in, all that fun jazz, you're going to be just fine. And because you have the highest super chat of the evening, we will have to make you the show sponsor. So let's go here, Luis. I, uh, uh, you know, I think I've got that right. Make sure I spell your name right. So at least I can do it right. So I'm butchering the pronunciation. The least thing I can do is make sure the spelling is accurate. And I think it is. All right, there you go. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. Thank you so much for the support, sir. We'll put a little, a little, uh, some jams on while I find my next comment. I am feeling good. Let's see. Where did I leave off? This is the hardest part about, about Super Chats. All right. Here we are. Found it. All right. So next up... Next up is Tom Hoffenkamp. He says, um, whoop, whoop. <laughs> That's one way to start. Whoop, whoop. Uh, Predominion went down today. Official 2023 activity. I like it. He says, I feel like a Ron Jr. Sunday's forecasted rain will water it in in SoCal, so I can only do stuff like that in the rainy season. Yeah, cool. That's cool. Here's the thing. Like, ideally, yes, you want to water your pre-immersion in, you know, 24 to 48 hours after application. There are people around here, I'll tell you, like, they get their pre they get their lawn sprayed, like the ones that just, that use a lawn care service. The, the, the ones around here, they're not running irrigation. Like, there, there are people that got their lawn sprayed with pre-emergent um, weeks ago. And they didn't turn irrigation on. They just waited for it to rain. You know what I mean? And and they are the ones, they don't have weeds in their lawn. So as, as long as you get the pre-emergent down, it's not, it's not, it's not super picky about like you having to get out there and have to water it in like right after applying it. The thing you do have to do though is get it down prior to weeds showing up in your lawn. If you, if you, if you check that box, you're going to be okay. So that's why like this stuff of waiting to like March timeframe to do it. I, I am not a fan. I think you're just, um, you're behind the eight ball and there's not really at least from what I've found, any negatives to getting it down a bit earlier. Like the pros are doing it. I've done mine like two years ago. I did it, uh, it was already down. 
So um, I'm, I'm a little bit later this year by a week, but it'll, it'll still be fine. So good job, Tom. It's gonna, you got rain, so you got Mother Nature cooperated with you. She, she smiled on your pre-emergent app and your weed-free lawn this spring and summer will thank you for it. So good stuff, man. Very, very cool. Uh, let's see here. So question, this is a good question. We got one here from the Instagram, one from Chase Matt Nine. He says, hey Ron, quick question. Do I need to worry about runoff when spraying liquid pre-emergent? I live in North Georgia and was planning to spray Saturday before the Sunday rain. No, not really. No, not really. Um, so just just spray it, apply it, and it's it'll get watered in. I mean, it's gonna be it'll be just fine. It'll be just fine, Chase. Um, yeah, there's not there's not nothing nothing to worry about with that. I mean, there's I, I, this is a common question. People will say, you know, if I put down a granular pre-emergent, I get like a heavy rain. Is it all going to get washed away? No, not it's not. I mean, and what you can tell is if you want to, you can look, especially if you're not doing, you're doing liquid, but it's just not going to happen either way. But if you, with a granular, if you guys want to answer this question, like after you apply it, if you have a heavy, have a heavy rainfall afterwards, just go look where your lawn drains. Do you see like a bunch of yellow, like piled up there? You're, you're probably not going to find that, right? It's because it, the water, it, the, it's going to get watered in. It's going to break down. It's going to go in the soil. It's going to, it's going to stay pretty much where you put it. So yeah, to answer, to answer your question, Chase, go ahead and get your pre-emergent down tomorrow. It's a great plan and it's going to rain. So that's even a better plan, right? So you don't have to spend any money on uh, running irrigation. And in, in Georgia, this time of year, it's really not even, it's, it, we're getting rain weekly at, at this point. So to having to run irrigation just isn't even, um, isn't really necessary in most cases, right? You can put it down and just wait a couple of days and we'll get rainfall and you get it watered in for free. Again, most places around here, most most people in my in my subdivision, they don't run irrigation. Actually, to say not most, none of them run irrigation after the lawn care service comes and puts their pre-emergent down. They just wait for it to rain and their lawns are, are weed free. So there's that. All right, let's see here. So we've got Todd Hickey. He says, a week ago, I applied certainty to a small POA outbreak, okay? I forgot to use surfactant. No obvious effect to POA so far. Do I need to reapply with surfactant? We had significant rain the day after application. Uh, I would give it some more time. It's only been a week. I'd say if you get to be, if by if by week two, if, you, if you're 14 days in, you're not seeing any color, any anything, um, any, any any fall off as far as the color of the POA. Uh, if you want to do another application of your spot spring with surfactant this time, yeah, that would be good. But just remember the way, especially this time of year, because the temperatures are cooler, uh, herbicides, post emergent herbicides take longer to be to begin showing results. It takes longer to work. It will work. It's just going to take a bit longer. And what you find with with certainty, um, certainty Celsius, the the post emergent herbicides that are nice that are gentle on the grasses you're trying to keep is they tend to. They tend to, to 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 ramp up really slowly, and then the weed the weed when it gets to die off, you're gonna see it begin to, to to fall off a lot faster once it begins to take effect. So, I wouldn't throw in the towel just yet. I mean, it's it's only been a week. Um, when I spray nut sedge for with um with certainty in the summertime, I don't really look at it till like seven days go by, and it's, and and a week later, I do see a noticeable result where it's largely discolored, but it's not really until you know, after week two, going to week three, that it's like, it looks like it's truly dead. It's brown, all the colors out of it. It's like, it's burnt to a crisp. It's going away. Right. And that's in the summertime. So this time of year, it will work. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to, it's very effective against POA. It's just going to be a bit slower. Uh, so give it another week or so, Todd, you should start seeing some color, you know, the, the color of the POA start, start going away a bit. Look in the, uh, the description for the part description for certainty. I think it's in there. I have it in there where I show how what it does against POA. Um, and that was the last year when I did my uh, my neighbor's lawn. I think I've got that in here. And I've got sedges in here. I think I've got POA in here too. I think so. Maybe. Yeah, I do. Yep, yep. So go to, so if we look here real quick, that is POA annua, right? Um, your annual bluegrass. And then this is, I think it was like, this is like, uh, this is a, a 10 days later or so. It started falling off, but I also sprayed his lawn in February. It was, it was a couple of weeks from um, from now, from from like this time of year, and that's what it looked like ten days later. So if you look from where it was before, that's what it looked like before, right? And then this is it, ten days later. I mean, it's it's still green. You can still see some color in it, but it, it does just take a while before it begins taking effect and begins to fall off. So. It's again, it certainly is very effective against POA. It's just depending on where you are, because I think you're in Oklahoma, depending on where you are, it, um, you know, it, and what temperatures you're seeing, it can take a bit longer. So 
give it more time. Next time you apply it, at using surfactant will help improve the result that you get. So good stuff. Appreciate the question. If you need anything else, uh, definitely let me know. And you know, you can always, if you can, you, you can always send me pictures because I think you're in the academy. So you can, um, you know, you can send me a picture or whatever and, and just, just post it to the, to the group as well, if you like. All right, next up is uh, Charles Westmoreland. He says, hello, Ron. Picked up my Carbon Pro G today. We'll put it down tomorrow. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. I like it. Carbon Pro G is a good product. I like it. Good stuff. Next up is Randall Lard. He says, hey, Ron, good evening. Hanging out with adult beverages and a charcoal. I didn't see the rest of it. Uh, let's see. Is it just, yeah, the charcoal. Just enjoying a good evening with the charcoal grill and adult beverages. Watching the Q&A on the big screen. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate the uh, the support. I'm sure your adult beverage is better than this the lemonade that I am drinking tonight. Uh, and hopefully you're cooking something good on the grill. Hopefully you're cooking up something good on the grill tonight, right? So thanks so much. I really appreciate the support. Next is Alice Shibley. I'm not sure if you're new, Alice, but if, if you are, welcome to, this, to the live stream. It says, I started to do my lawn myself last year. I didn't have to put down any weed killers all season, but now weeds are starting to sprout all over. I did Prodiamine back in the 1st of October. Okay, yeah, so... I'm not sure where in the country you are, Alice. Uh, if, if you are in Northeast Georgia, let's say if you're my neighbor next door, I would have said you waited a bit long. Really, um, you know, September, the first part, of, early September would have been a better time to get your pre-emergent down to prevent some of the weeds that you're likely, that you're likely seeing now. Now, the weeds that you're seeing now, prodiamine is not gonna do a whole lot for. You're gonna have to, I mean, if they're bad enough that you have to, that you really wanna get rid of them, you, you're gonna have to use some kind of post-emergent herbicide. So if you have Bermuda, Zoysia, uh, rye, and I think also Kentucky bluegrass, you can use um, Spectracide, the orange bottle, you can use that. Or if you're looking for something more potent, and again, depends on the weeds that you're trying to control, uh, you can use uh, Celsius, um, and or certainty. This combination works works very well. It's, it's, my, it's my favorite combination to use on warm season grass. But it, so it really depends on what weeds you're dealing with. Um, but the, the pre-emergent app that you did, depending on a couple things too, like it was, it, for me, it was a bit late, but also um, um, you didn't tell me about the rate that you used on it or, or even which, um, which uh, yeah, because even, even with Prodiamine, October, October, November, December, January, yeah, I mean, that's that's still, I mean, that's, you, you, you should be having a, a ton of breakthrough um, this time of year, assuming you applied it before before the, the problem started and that it was applied properly, but it doesn't matter. We, we, that's where we are now. So what I would say is get your pre-emergent down um, to prevent the spring and summer weeds and then kill the existing weeds with a post-emergent herbicide. I don't know what weeds you have because you didn't even tell me um, what part of the country you're in, but if I'm going to answer this, if you remind you're my neighbor in Georgia and you have Bermuda, if you have Bermuda using like Celsius certainty, this combination will work well. It's a more potent combo. Um, or if you want something that you may have to do a couple of applications, but can also produce a decent result, then spectracide, this, uh, can work well too. Again, read the product label, make sure that again, if you have Bermuda, Zoysia, this is fine for that. I know that this product was, is fine for those. If you have other grass types, check the product label and make sure that it's safe for your particular uh, grass type. But we're gonna have to take like a two a two product approach here because one, we need something to kill the existing weeds, a post-emergent herbicide, and then we need something to prevent weeds in the future, right? To prevent what what's happening now from happening in the spring and summer. And that is where your pre-emergent application now will uh, will do that. So prodiamine is a good option. We We carry it. Um, here on the golf course lawn store under shop weed killer and then just simply go over to pre-emergent and then they'll all be listed there you got prodiamine dithiopyr um, any of these will work well but this as far as the easiest to use either one of these in granular form is easy because all you really need is just your broadcast spreader so like your scott spreader or your um, like an earthway and uh, and and apply it on your apply it to your lawn water it in or wait for it to rain and, and you're good to go. The liquids give you more more options over you know application rate, um, but the, you do have to have a scale to, to measure them out properly. Um, you do need to have a, a, a sprayer to apply them. So there's a bit more involved in the liquids, but you have more control over um, over the result and over, again, if you wanna mix like other products with it, liquids are the way to go. So it just depends on where you are and which on and which, um, which, way, you, uh, which way you decide to go with that. So 
Hope that helps. Sorry you're dealing with weeds, but there is a way forward. And, and I would really encourage you to get a pre-emergent application down to prevent this from being an issue in the spring and summer. All right, next up is Noick. Noick95 says, he says, uh, order the Yard Mastery sprayer, all the parts you recommended, and Prodiamine. Hoping to put it down next weekend. Nice, good stuff. Now, in the description, so um, Noick, if you got, if you're gonna be spraying liquid Prodiamine, I did a video last week, I think it was last week, uh, that that I've got several videos on, on mixing Prodiamine, but th there's one last week, and at the end of it, there like there's a more detailed video that actually shows me doing it, but in this video, which I'm gonna link in the chat right now, it talks about the rates that I like to use when I, when I use Prodiamine. Again, you, it, it's up to you. I'm not saying that my way is the only way to do it, but I get a pretty good result going, um, going that that route. So I'm going to link this video to you now. Uh, let's see, uh, pre-emergent video. All right, there you go. So that video there, watch that. The video at the end of it, or that's also in the description, will actually show me doing it. I've got like, I don't know, probably four or five videos actually showing um, how 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 I mix prodiamine and watch that. It'll tell you the tools you're going to need, like the scale and other stuff like that. And it's not hard. It really is not difficult. It's just you need to pay attention. You need to make sure you measure it properly and that you're applying like the four, let's say we take four, you have a 4,000 square foot lawn, that you're putting four gallons of this mix over the 4,000 square feet. Good stuff. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. Like me. Good stuff. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. Like once you watch the video, if you have any questions, you can email me at, if I can find my email address here, it's ron at golfcourselawn.com. So right there, ron at golfcourselawn.com. You can drop me in a line if you have any questions after you watch that. Um, but that should get you um, should get you all squared away. Good stuff, man. I like it. And, and the nice thing about getting a sprayer, Noek, it, this is not just for your pre-emergent application. It's going to give you the ability to do to really play and have fun now, right? So as far as putting down your um, your your PGR app, you're good to go there. If you decide you want to do you know, decide to when you decide to do insecticide, which is a good good thing to do, you can go with the liquids. You can go with like liquid acetylprin. So it just gives you a lot of flexibility around um, how you can take care of your line. It opens up an entire world of products that you don't really have exposure to if you only go the granular route. So good stuff. If you have any questions, let me know how I can help out. Next up is Bermuda DIY, Bermuda Guy DIY. It says, um, hey Ron, Georgia Local here. It says, when do you think we'll be getting started this year? Well, I, I would have been getting started this weekend, but you know, couldn't, um, it's gonna have to get pushed off a week, so I have to, um, I got something I have to do. But um, but yeah, next weekend is when I'm gonna be doing my pre-emergent app, uh, Bermuda Guide DIY. So yeah, you know, it's it's not it's not too um, it's not too early to get it done now if you if you want. You know what I mean? Again, the the lawn care services, the pro services in this area are already spraying pre-emergent. So if you as far as the way to kick off your season, if you wanna do um, that that light cleanup cut, which is what I like to do, and then get your pre-emergent down, by all means, get that done. Mix a soil test in there at some point between now and when you need, you need to start feeding the lawns. You can know which fertilizer is the best one to use, or is the, I say the best one, the best fit is more accurate for um, what your soil needs. And then away you go, away you go. But yeah, we are we are at go time, man. It's uh, the time, the season has started. The season has started. All right, next up is Todd uh, Hickey. He's back. He says, last season I fought early signs of fungus often. Not fun. He says, I think I need to increase my nitrogen. I used Caravan G, followed granular and liquid formula with Humic Max, thinking Country Club for with 24% uh, nitrogen. Yeah, so here's the thing. If you had um, uh, disease problems in your lawn, um, Todd, a couple of things you can do to actually help with that. If, you are, if you're not someone that scalps your lawn, if, you don't, if you're allowing like thatch to build up, like I would encourage you to, 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 to clean that out. Like get, like get the, get the thatch out of your lawn because the, remember that, that big, that nice spongy layer that stays moist is, it makes it easier for disease and, and, and those types of problems to take root in your lawn. You know, I, I typically on my lawn, um, during the summertime, I may have a, an area or two where I'll have some large pastel that'll try and come in. Last year, when I started turf raking regularly, when I started using the outlet and I started turf raking regularly to where I really didn't have a lot of thatch in my lawn, there was no buildup anyway, 
I had had no disease problems, no disease fungus issues or anything like that. So um, I'm not saying you need to go out and you need to go buy an expensive mower to, to take care of your lawn. But what I am saying is that um, there is something to be said by managing your thatch levels. So if your if your grass is really thick, if it's like matted down, you got like this you know, this big thick carpet of of a uh, of, of dense like dead Bermuda and other and other um, material there, clean that out. I would I would highly recommend um, getting that cleaned out between um, now and when you begin to start really feeding the lawn and fertilizing it. If you do that and then you get your um, your fungicide application down, um, you know, if you, if you said you had problems earlier, if you want to get it down in, you know, April, May time frame, you should be in a pretty good spot as far as keeping disease at bay for the most for the most part. That's that's what I have found anyway. Um, now, yeah, and increasing your nitrogen is not going to is not going to fix or going to help um, disease problems. That's not that's not really the way we're going to. We're going to take care of that. So it's really, you want to give <laughs> in a perfect world, you want to give the grass, the lawn as, as only enough nitrogen to meet its, its needs. You really don't want to, to overfeed it. It creates, it creates problems, it creates disease problems. It creates overgrowth problems. Um, it causes thatch problems. Like putting too much fertilizer, too much nitrogen into a lawn is not, is not a good thing. Like the only thing I can think about, like as far as disease goes, if you underfeed Bermuda, if you don't, if Bermuda doesn't have enough nitrogen, pretty much the only um, the, the, but there's probably others, but the one, the one disease that comes to mind that, that, that Bermuda that is underfed with nitrogen will can suffer from is, um, dollar spot. The pretty much all the other ones like e excessive amounts of nitrogen only makes the problem worse. So if you're dealing with dollar spot in your lawn, then yes, you want to make sure you're, you're doing a soil test and you're giving the lawn enough nitrogen. If it's not dollar spot or you have like large patch or something else going on, I would give it, I would ensure we're giving it as the amount of nitrogen that it needs and no more. And, and I find that if you're doing biostimulants um, along your along with your fertilization program, 0.7 pounds of nitrogen somewhere in that area, that space is plenty. Like you get a really good result with that. You don't get a lot of extra, extra growth. The turf looks great, and you don't have the disease problems, especially if you're also managing your your thatch levels. You know what I mean? If you're if you're doing you're doing um, your cultural practices to keep the lawn from getting too thick and dense. So, hope that helps. Um, if you are if you are really concerned about, um, as far as a fungicide goes, what I would say is this, I would not, like Caravan is a great product, it's a great combination product, but if you're looking for strictly a fungicide, that wouldn't be my first choice. If you're going for a fungicide, what I would use is Headway. So if we go to the store shop and then go to fungicide insecticide, Caravan is a great product. I'm not hitting on Caravan, but what a Caravan is, is an insecticide product and it's a, and it's a Zoxastrobin. So it's got, um, so it's, it's a great product if you are, you just want like a one and done from like um, from a standpoint of hey I want to get my preventative fungicide down and I want to get my grub control down in like the May time frame. Caravan, excellent product. But if you're if you're someone where you've um, had disease problems in your lawn and that's the main thing you're you're concerned about, what I would use instead is Headway because with Headway G this product you have both azoxystrobin and propiconazole. So you have two different fungicides, two different modes of action. It's going to do a better job controlling the disease problem that you're having in your lawn. And then the question you're gonna say is, well, if I don't know, if I use Headway, what do I use for insecticide? What I would use then is a Celeprin. So what, what I personally do is I use Headway as my um, fungicide, and then I use a Celeprin. Doesn't really matter which one you wanna go with, the, the SC, the liquid, or the granular. Last year I used the liquid, loved the results I got with it. This year I'll, I'll likely do the liquid again too. Um, but this, this combination, a Celeprin and Headway, is superior to Caravan. Also because um, while Caravan controls grubs, it doesn't have control or it doesn't have anything really for um, like uh, turf caterpillars, like uh, like um, army worms, sod webworms. I don't think Caravan does anything against that. I know it doesn't do anything against army worms, whereas a Celeprin does. So as an insecticide, a Celeprin is a better product. And as a fungicide, Headway is a better product. So that is what I, that's my thoughts on, on the matter. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps out, man. Great questions. As far as going with, uh, the, the, the country club 24 N great way to start the season. I like that. Oh no, the, 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 the 12% N because it's 12% nitrogen, 24% potassium. So it's a 12, 0, 24. So it's 12% ni um, nitrogen, 24%, uh, potassium. That's a great, it's a good, it's a good way to roll. So, uh, so yeah, I think I answered all your questions. If you need anything else, let me know. Again, feel free to drop me an email if um, if there's something that needs clarification, but I think you should be good, sir. Good stuff. All right, next up is Ignacio Paez. He says, hey, Ron, it's almost prodiamine time. In my opinion, if you're in the Southeast U US, it is prodiamine time. It is prodiamine time. You know, if you're Georgia, Georgia, South Carolina, 
maybe North, maybe the southern part of North Carolina, definitely Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, southern Texas. Yeah. Get your preamp down. SoCal, get it down. Remember, a, a little bit early. I should get that on a t-shirt. A little bit early is better than a little bit late. Get your pre immersion down. This would be great for a t-shirt. Only lawn nerds would get it, but it's I say I say it literally every week. So it, it probably should go on a t-shirt or something, right? All right, next up is Kay Randall. He says, hey, Ron, I just pulled samples from my soil test. It doesn't seem right to mix samples from the front and back. Would it be better just to do two tests? You can. You can absolutely do a test for the front. You can do one for the back. I have people that do that, and they send me the results. If it's the first time you've done your soil test, you're doing soil testing, then getting a kit for the front and one for the back is a good way to go. There's nothing wrong with that. Then you can see, hey, are, are they vastly different? Can I use the same program on both on both the front and and um, the front and back lawn? Sure. And then once you get everything you know stabilized to where you know your pH is good in both areas, your nutrient levels for the most part are the same in both areas, then doing one across the entire property is, a, is something you can do as well too. If you're going to go for the two test route, you can save yourself a little bit of money by going, because there's a kit that has two tests with it. So you go to shop and then soil test kits and pH adjustments. And then this one here, the Pro Pack, with this guy, you get um, you get the tool, you get the, the probe tool, you get this guy, and you get two soil test kits and you save yourself a bit of money by, um, by going that route. So if you're going to do two tests and you need one of these, then go that way. Otherwise, just go to, um, just get the, just the one test, or sorry, just go to, I'll just show you, it's easier. <laughs> it's, if you don't need the tool, don't get this one. If you, if you already have a way to get cores, just go here and just get the two pack and it saves you a bit of money. So like one is $30, two is $55. It's a way for you to save a little bit of money if you go that route, so. Sounds like a plan, K. Randall. Um, once you get the front and the back lawn figured out, you can uh, you can go to one test if you want, but there's but there are people there. I still have viewers that they just like having the data, and and every time they do a soil test, they do one for the front and they do one for the back because they just like to know how each area is doing. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you, if that's you, by all means, go ahead. I cannot. I'm not gonna. I am not gonna fault you. Let's see here. So we have another super chat here. One from LG. Let's see here. Super chat received. Now, LG, here's the thing. I, I don't want to say, let me scroll up here and make sure I, this, is, this is correct. I don't want to say you're being a bit petty, but you're uh, you're being a bit petty. So let's see here. So LG did a 56. No, not really, because you did 56.78 and then $2. That's 58.78. Um, and I think, let me see here. I want to make sure. I don't want to be wrong because Lord knows I'll, I'll, I'll catch all kinds of. I'll catch all kinds of grief for it. And then Luis did 60. So at $2 plus the 56, you're at 58. You're still below, you're $2 below still. Um, you need to do $4. You're still slightly below um, uh, Luis. So we're going to need $2 more to maybe be able to make that happen. So see, and that's what happens when you're being petty. See, that's what happens. Unless, unless I'm missing another super chat. Maybe you did one and I missed it. But I don't think so. No, I didn't. All right, good. So, Luis, you can hold on for a little bit longer. I'm sure LG's coming. He's not going to let this go because uh, that's just how he is. And while I find the next question, guys, if you guys are enjoying the show, please hit the like button. It costs you guys absolutely nothing. It's a free way to support the channel, support the live stream, sends good vibes to YouTube, sends more people to come this way. Hit that like button, smash that like button, do whatever you want to do. Just hit it ever so gently. I'd really, really appreciate it. Well, I take a sip of my lemonade and I find the next, the next comment. All right. Um, and of course, so LG's got two super chats now. All right, so yes, so you're right, LG. Cumulatively, now you are above Luis, so you are now the show sponsor. Hi, hi, hi. This guy, this guy. Guys, what, what are we gonna do? We're gonna have to do something about about LG. We're gonna, we're gonna have to say, hey, listen. We're gonna have to say that you know he can only um, he only do it once per once every every other live stream or something. What, what are we gonna do? Because he's he's not gonna let this go. It's gonna be a thing with him every single week. I can I can see this. He's one of those guys just has to win. So there you go, LG. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. I appreciate the super chat, sir. Appreciate all the love and support. And you also give me you know, someone to make fun of and, and have a great time with. So appreciate the, uh, appreciate the support. 
All right, so let me find out where I left off. Actually, we have a question here for Offroad um, from Offroad NV in Instagram. It's a good question. He says, does Caravan G help with moles? Great question. Okay, so not directly, not directly. So does Caravan G target moles? No. What it does do is the insecticide in it targets grubs, which is one of the food sources that moles like enjoy. It's what they like to eat. So by using Caravan G, or really, if, you, if all you're trying to do is take care of um, a mole's food source, I would still use a celeprin, but a Caravan G will work. Um, so if you could use um, an insecticide, something to target the mole, uh, to target the grubs, and then um, if you can put out a combination of traps and bait, so like uh, mole uh, poisons and then also mole traps, that does a pretty good job of, of making your lawn a lot less attractive and making them go somewhere else. So uh, so does it does it target? Um, so yeah, Offroad NV, LG is, um, you gotta come over to YouTube, man. Come over to YouTube and or go or join on uh, on Facebook. Then you can see all the antics. You'll see, you, you'll see what I gotta deal with every every week. You see what I gotta what I gotta put up with. Um, but yeah, he's um, he's a longtime viewer, good friend. Uh, loves to give me a hard time and loves to always. Um, he's he's one of these guys that just always has to win. So so that that's that's a good way to describe LG. But to answer your question, Caravan G will not itself target moles directly, but it will target their food source. So yes, it it can be used as part of a of a, an overall strategy to reduce moles po the mole population in your in your lawn, but it's not the product that I would choose if all you're trying to do is um get rid of moles. I would go with something like a celeprin instead because that is purely an insecticide. That way you're not applying a fungicide unnecessarily um, just to try and kill the grubs in your lawn. So you use a celeprin, that is, that will go after moles. That's a great, an excellent insecticide. Um, and then that combined with the poisons, um, mole poison, which I will link, I think I can find that, I can link in the chat here for you. Uh, that will do a good job over time of reducing the moles in your lawn. And if you want a good option, I don't know how this is gonna work as far as if this will paste in Instagram, but we'll try it. Um, that is one lovely thing about Apple devices. You gotta love like universal paste clipboard. It's pretty awesome. All right, so there you go. So check that out, that one, look it up. I mean, I'm not sure if it's clickable or not, but if you look up that product on Amazon, you can you can get um, that mole poison and that, that should help you out. Great, great, great question. All right, so let's see where we left off before um, we had uh, the LG, the LG show started. Let us see. I'll put some music on for you guys while I'm looking for the next comment here. Let's see. All right, here we go. Our next comment is from Hawaii from Mark Romano. He says, nobody in my neighborhood has a lawn fetish, so I watch you and your fans. So you're saying, so this is, so are we like your 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 battle buddies in lawn care? Mark, you don't have anyone else to be able to hang out with, so you just hang out with us on YouTube? That's cool, we can be that. We can be that for you. I'm good with that. I'm good with being your, uh, you know, being your your lawn care, your lawn care accountability partner, your lawn care buddy. We can, we can bump fists and talk about our grass and keeping weeds away and all that fun stuff. All right, so next up, let's see here. We have uh, Ignacio Paez says, farmers grow crop cover during the off season to keep and improve organic matter in the soil, such as root cycling. Could that translate to lawn care? Really, it makes me really consider seeding rye during the off season. I guess that's one way of doing it, Ignacio, but I mean, what the way that I put um, uh, regularly put organic material into my soil is using essential G, right? So the biosimilants that we use, the granular ones like this right here. So we go to shop and then remember green. So these like essential G, I mean, as far as like adding organic material, you're putting compost, reclaimed coffee grounds, um, biochar, humate, silicon, you're putting like a, like this, 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 this whole, this, this package, this you don't this this bio pack, this granular bio pack into your soil that's introducing you know plenty of organic material, and you don't have to worry about spraying it out and killing it off when you when you get tired of it in the springtime. So, could you do a rye overseed and then get rid of it as a way and let the, the dead rye grass decompose and sit in your lawn and use it as a way to introduce organic material? Sure, that's one strategy. Or you could use something like Essential G, which has other benefits that that just dead ryegrass is not going to have, like the biochar, the humate, 
um, the silicon, like all, all the, the additional things that you just you don't really get um, in just regular grass. And so that for that reason, I like to that's that's why I prefer that. So is it? Uh, I think part of the reason why you don't see um, not, not part of the reason, a huge part of why you don't see that happen on large scale farming is it would be it'd be cost prohibitive. Can you imagine if they get to go and like put the, put down like all this kind of stuff all over all over their their fields? It just wouldn't you know it'd be it'd be cost prohibitive for them to do, for them to do that. But for home lawn care, using a granular product like like Essential G or whatever your your is of choice, I think is a is a great way to go. It has all the has all the benefits and and more with really none of the negatives. So that is that's my thoughts on the on the matter. All right, next up is Gary Freeman. He says, hey, Ron and Stripe Action Gang. Happy Friday, y'all. Hit the like button. Please do, guys. We got, we have like 122 people in here and there's only like 91 likes. What's up with that? We could do better. We can do better. We can do better than that. And actually that number's low because people come and go throughout the live stream. So really that means there's a bunch of you guys are here that are watching right now and you haven't you haven't hit the like button. So what's, what's going on? Are you not entertained? Come on, you can do that for me. All right, next up is Career Choices 912. He says, happy Friday, Shop Action Gang. Just completed the ultimate lawn care course. It took me from, um, from so what, uh, it took me from so what confident to very confident. Nice, good, always good. Always good to invest in education. And uh, always good to invest in education and, and to step up your game. So very good. I'm, I'm glad that you got, uh, that the course was worthwhile for you, uh, lawn career choices, and that you, you were less confident and now you're very confident, which is good. Good stuff. Now all you have to do now is get out there and apply it and practice and you'll begin to learn you begin to learn what you didn't know, what you don't know that you don't know, right? So nothing nothing beats doing. Yes, it is good to always always obviously getting formal training, always good, but then but then once you have that, you actually gotta get out there and uh and do it. And do it. All right, next up is Gary uh Kellett Jr. He says, Hey Ron. I have cool season and last year I put down Caravan G mid May and mid September. Should I hold off the spring and wait to see if I had any damage this fall? Okay, so you did you did Caravan G in mid May and then mid September. Should I hold off the spring and switch to see if, No, what what I would do is I would apply I mean I what I would do is I would I would what you did is exactly how I would I would use um Caravan if that's this way you decide to go. Like I'm I'm going the headway route, but if you are going to use Caravan Mid May is the right time to do it, and then September October time frame. Really, really, here's the thing: I would I would do Caravan or Insecticide really just once in a season. I I personally have not seen the need to do it multiple times unless you have um, you have some kind of insect problem in your lawn. In that case, if you have if you have like a, a problem with grubs in your lawn, then doing a follow up app could be necessary. I've never had to do that though. So if you're going to use Caravan in mid May. I would switch to um, to headway, just a straight fungicide for your fall applications. And unless, again, unless in your case, you have a history of grub or some other insect damage in your lawn in the fall time of year, in which case then caravan would be good. But if not, if you're just doing it mainly from a standpoint of, um, of, of, of disease prevention, headway is a better option. It's a little bit cheaper too than doing, um, than doing caravan in the fall. So hope, uh, hope that helps. I would not, I would not not do that. I would do, I would still do you know caravan either caravan in May or Celeprin headway in May and then headway in the fall. That is what I would do. That is what I have done. So hope that helps, sir. Great question. All right, so we have another super chat from LG. He's chiming in here. Thank you so much, LG. He says, super chat received. "Can we please get that Jay Z from your YouTube Shorts?" And yes, uh, Max. <laughs> and yes, Maximus, I am entertained. <laughs> Gladiator. Oh man, so a movie buff too. Nice. Um, no, I can't play that. I can play that on YouTube Shorts because like that, like Jay Z, like that, those that music is licensed by YouTube. Um, or I say it's licensed by YouTube, but it's but you can you you can use that in Shorts. I can't play that on on this i don't have i don't have rights to play it on here uh so no i can't play that here unfortunately so sorry but i can give you some tango bolero how about that i can use some tango bolero until i find the next question or comment i appreciate the super chat i love you too how about that received. <laughs> all right let's see let's see where i left off you know lg i think you know what if we if we ever meet in person one day i have a feeling that we would get along swimming i think we'd get along just fine we'd hang out with some some adult beverage of choice and solve all the problems over the world uh over a grill or whatever you know 
would, I think, I think we would get along pretty well if we were to meet in person. Maybe one day. All right, next up is Tom Hoppenkamp. He's back. He says, Lon, reason number three. I read uh, it is used is to, com to combat Bermuda mites. Um, very small, destructive pests that little is known about. What do you know about them? Uh, I have not dealt with Bermuda mites before, um, Tom, um, I'm hopping camp. I had a Bermuda, I had a Bermuda, I had a viewer last year that was dealing with that. And I think I told them, uh, I asked some friends of mine and they told me to use, I think it was Delta Guard was a product that they told me to, 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 to use for that. That was a the insecticide for that. Let me make sure I'm not telling you wrong here. I'm pretty sure. That's right. There's a, there's a a product called I believe I believe it's Delta Guard that will work against Bermuda mites. So there's a couple of them, but let me see if I am telling you correctly here. Yeah, it's Guard, like spelled wrong, spelled like G A R D. I believe that is correct. Let me look here. Let's see if I'm remembering that from last year. Um, Clover mites. Yeah, I believe. I believe this, yeah, Bermuda grass mice, yeah. So, yeah, so so I have not dealt with that myself, but I, I spoke to someone who actually, who who has dealt with that, again, guy, a friend of mine that that, that, um, that works in the professional turf industry, and he's had really good results with Delta Guard. So that's what I recommended to the viewer last year that had that problem, and they got good results with it. I've, I just never use it, because, I mean, fingers crossed, I've never had Bermuda mites in my lawn, and I don't, um, hopefully I never have to have them. So, um, so if you want to um to try it out i will um you know i'll just put this um in the chat for you i'll link to the to the product here and that should yeah so i i spelled incorrectly in this link but it will um it will still take you there so let me see at tom hoffenkamp uh delta it's really delta guard without a u in it but i spell it with a u in this link so Check that out. Look into that. Uh, the viewer that I had this question from last year that had Bermuda mites had got good results from it. So hope that helps. Uh, Offer NV says, I was hoping you would we would show your video of you and Alex, LOL. Uh, which one? We got a lot of videos, Alex and I together. I don't, I don't have a, yeah, I'm not sure which one, which one you're referring to. All right. Next up is Mr. Dwayne's world party time. Excellent. He says, Hey Ron, happy Friday. Good day, sir. Uh, soil temps at 51 degrees here in SoCal. Getting ready for pre-scalp and pre-emergent. I like it. I like it. That's that, that's a good plan. I, I your your lawn will thank you. Uh, you know the, the weeds will hate it, but you'll have a you know as far as like not having weeds in your lawn, it's gonna thank you with that uh, with that program. Again, the, the guys the the pre-scalp is something that I do, not strictly necessary, but it is. Um, I do it primarily because I want to save myself a lot of headache in March as far as doing like scalping all in one big job. But um, but the, the one thing I would say is get your pre-emergent down. So like the pre-scalp, it's kind of a nice to have, kind of a bonus, not strictly necessary, but the pre-emergent, that is not an optional thing if you don't want to fight with weeds in your lawn. If you like having weeds in your lawn, then don't do pre-emergent. But if you don't want to fight with weeds and you don't want to have to buy expensive herbicides and have to spend time applying them, then pre-emergent is a good idea. Travis Dowdery says, okay, we are having weird soil temp changes, not saying... Uh, steady at 55 degrees here in Texas. When should I apply pre-emergent? Soil temp will drop back down to around 49 to 50 next week. Travis, if I'm not sure where in Texas you are, but let's say if you are, you know, you're as far as, let me see, it's latitude longitude. If you're along, if you're, if you are, like, have the same weather that we have in Georgia, like, you know, your, your climate is similar to what we have here in Northeast Georgia, early February is when I would do it. A bit early is better than a little bit late. So career choices is up next, is up next. He says, um, happy Friday, Strap Action Gang. I just completed the ultimate long course. Very informative. I went from somewhat confident before taking the course to feel very confident that I will crush. Cool, good stuff. All right, next up is Brick Rehab. He is saying, I says, I have, hey Ron, I'm using the Yard Mastery app. It listed uh, Prodiamine both on 128 and 328. So would the right application be 1.6 ounces per four gallons of water. Let me think about that. Okay, so if you're doing a split app, um, yes, that would be correct because it's, so if we're doing, let's work through the math here really quick. So point, you actually have to check, you guys can check me, make sure I'm doing this right, but I think I'm, I think that's correct. So uh, 0.8 ounces, that's the higher, higher end of the allowable limit for prodiamine for Bermuda grass per year. 
it's really 0.83, we'll just say 0 0.80 just to make it, make the math easy. So we take 0.8 times four, that's 3.2 ounces. If you're gonna be cutting that in half into two applications, half of 32 is 16. So yeah, that would be right. So 1.6 ounces now, and then another one at the end of March, if you're gonna go the split app route. Yep, sounds good to me. Sounds good. The only thing I would say Brick Rehab is make sure that you are, um, that you're applying it properly or that, 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 that four gallons, that 1.6 ounces with four gallons of water is going over 4,000 square feet. Because if you take that now, you say you take the four gallons of water and you you put all of it over 2,000 square feet, now, now we're over applying the product. You know what I mean? So it, that's the only thing with liquids. Make sure that the amount that you mix up, it's supposed to cover this much square footage. Make sure you spray it over that much square footage and then your application will be dead on. Great stuff. All right, next is Greg Lyon. He says, with all the rain runoff, I'm getting areas of dirt where I am not seeing any grass and hope it'll come back in the spring. It should, it should, Greg. Many of those areas are where my leveling last September didn't fill in. Yes, yeah, so you did your, your top dressing a little bit late in the season. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much, Greg. I, I really, once you, once, you know, the heat comes back, once the heat comes back and uh, you know spring is here and you start feeding Bermuda properly, you start giving it its, its nice diet of nitrogen, adequate amounts of nitrogen, not too much, but just what it needs, it, you should, it should take off and fill in. I'm, you know, if, if grass grew there before, it will grow there. It, it, there's no reason why it shouldn't grow back again. It's just like, it just sounds like your, uh, your, your top dressing in September, coupled with the fact that our, um, our fall, we had a, a relatively cool fall this year compared to, to uh, cool fall this past fall compared to the 2021 fall uh that didn't have you didn't have enough juice you didn't have enough heat and sunshine to um to get the remuda to really fill in nicely but i wouldn't worry about it you're gonna be fine i mean once once this year starts out the season starts out the warm weather gets here it should fill in and be it should be just okay it should be fine i wouldn't i would not um i would not worry about it but yeah but that's a great but what you're talking about greg that's a great point as to why um why really people have asked me hey hey can i do can i do uh, apply pre emer can i do um top dressing like in late august can i do it in september can i do it now if i wanted to and i'm like i mean you I, technically i guess you could but there's really no reason to there's, there's there's really no benefit to doing it now versus waiting when the grass is actively growing because you can have problems where like what greg is talking about where if you have heavy rain the grass hasn't grown through it because it's dormant and you're going to have runoff it, it it moves around and and you end up having to fix um, these problem areas and that could have all been avoided had you just waited until or done it during the time of the year when the grass was actively growing you know what I mean so no harm no foul I mean it's going to recover it's going to be just fine I mean you're not you, haven't, you didn't do anything that's, that's going to any kind of permanent damage it's more it's more of a visual it's more of a visual um, thing than anything else you know the grass is going to be just fine so and then he says, I'm going to get your follow-up question here first before I go to the other ones. He says, um, any suggestions on getting those areas back up and growing? Thanks. Just time. Just time. Just w whenever the heat and the sunshine arrives and it's here consistently, Bermuda's going to take off and it'll fill in. I wouldn't worry about it. Again, it's just it's just going to be a time thing. Nothing to, to, really, to really worry about. Career Choices says, um, thy neighbor, thank you for making it easier for me to know how to have great soil. You're welcome. I appreciate you watching and I'm glad that the content is, uh, is useful for you. All right. Next up for brick rehab, he says, okay, so mixing Celsius certainty and prodiamine, which tip is best? So, um, if you're going to, here's, I'll say this, the best way to go, the best way to go, the better way to go brick rehab would be to, to apply them separately to do prodiamine by itself and then do, um, Celsius certainty and um, a surfactant along with it um, by themselves. That would be the best way to go. But if you're gonna mix them all together, what I would say, and I showed this earlier on the show, but I'll show you here again. Nope, wrong camera. There we go. So um, this is the tip, this one here, guys, that's the floodjet tip. This floodjet tip is what you would normally use for doing um, pre-emergent, because it could produce a larger droplet size. But if you're going to be spraying a post-emergent along with it, which benefits from a finer droplet size, right? Because it's easier for it to get on the, the weeds, the, the leaves of, the, of the, the plant you're trying to target, then going with an air induction tip, something like this, this is gonna produce a finer droplet than the flood jet, but not quite as fine as my favorite tip for spraying um, foliar applications, foliar products, which is this guy. So if you have the time, 
you could do them separately. You could do your pre-emergent and then you could come back and then do mix up another batch of, mix up a batch of Celsius certainty, your surfactant, and then spray it with the foliar tip. But if you said, you know what, too much work, I only want to do it once. This the air induction tip is a um, is a good is a good middle ground. And I I put links in the chat earlier for that. But if you want that tip re rehab, I will find it here and I will get it to you. There we go, air induction tip. That one right there. This guy will do the uh, the trick. So at brick rehab, there. Good, good question. All right, next up is uh, Dwayne's World. He says, um, hey Ron, what's the the best, what's the best rate for certainty? How many grams per gallon? And is it liquid or granular water dispersible? Yeah, so for certainty, it is a granule that, that, that dissolves when you put it in water. And there's not, as far as the rate goes, it is, um, per the label, it is done by scoops. By, so with certainty, get this out. You've got, get this out here. You're gonna get one of these with it. You can get a measuring cup. It looks like there's the guys on the gram. That's what it's gonna look like there. And then if it was on the live stream, it's gonna look like this, right? So you've got a big scoop, big scoop, little scoop. The way I use this is I like to use three, if I'm mixing it, if I'm mixing it with, um, if I'm mixing it with Celsius, I will do three of these, three of the small scoops, right? Three of the small scoops, um, with four gallons of water and the and then Celsius at it's, I think it's 0.45 rate whatever it is it's marked on the cup here but the the rate for Celsius for four gallons of water um, if all you're doing is you're just spraying certainty just by itself and um, and you want to go up a little bit on the rate uh, and you say you say you're trying to target like a Poe or something just one large scoop will work so one large scoop with a couple of gallons of water. And then versus the the small ones, it, it depends on the rate that you're trying to use. But it, it's not done; it's not measured um, by weight. It's uh, on the label. It will talk about the number of of scoops. It provides guidance as well as depending on on the, the the weeds that you're targeting. But I find that three small scoops, this three of the small ones works works pretty well. Produces a good result. The minimum, I think the memory serves you right. The minimum dilution rate with certainty, I, I believe it calls for two gallons of water. So, so just read the label and then, you know, um, uh, actually, no, I said that wrong uh, for two gallons of water, three of these small or one of the large. And if you're going with four gallons, you could do five of the small or two of the large to, to protect the rate up higher. So I, I, what I said earlier is with four gallons, but that's, that's too diluted. The, 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 the original thing that I said was really for a two gallon rate. So check the label, um, three three small lower rate or one large for two gallons, or if you're doing four gallons of water, um, you know, four to five small or two large. And that's, that's a higher rate and depends. And really, um, you know, you, I think you'll, you'll find you'll get a good result with the, with the, the lesser amount. That's, that's the rate that I normally use is the, is not normally, I normally use the, the, um, the, the, the smaller amount. I haven't seen a need to, to go up on, on, uh, on rate for um, sedges or for POA. For either one of those, I've gotten a good, I've gotten great results using uh, less of the product. So, so hope that helps. And it's not a granular. It's, sorry, it's not a, it's not a liquid. It comes in a bottle like this. You can see, that's what it looks like. And it's teeny. It's incy weensy. It's tiny, but it's just a small. I'm not gonna open this up, but it's a, it's a. I mean, this and this, and the label, and your PPE is all you need. All right, so if you have any other questions, Dwayne, um, feel free to drop me an email here, ron at golfersalon.com, um, and I'll do my best to help you out. But it's done by scoops. You don't actually have, you don't need a scale to measure out uh, certainty. All right, next up is Greg. He says, uh, what is this? He says, is there, uh, there, is there any way um, my, my Bermuda coming out of dormancy with our current weather, right? Uh, must be all POA, which I need to spray with uh, certainty and surfactant. Yeah, so if it looks like you, you can tell if it's, um, I mean, if it's if it's across the entire lawn, it's, um, it's I mean, if, if the entire lawn is greening up, Greg, then it could be coming out of dormancy. But really, that I'd only imagine that if you're like in Florida, if you're in my area in Georgia, your lawn's not come out of dormancy yet, and you can tell if it's it's POA because it has like POA has like a like a light like a white flower in the middle of it. I can show you here what it looks like. So if we go here to certainty and I can find a picture here of it. 
Um, no. And yeah. Okay. So if you look here, it's kind of hard to see in the picture, but you you see you see like that the white the little where my mouse is. You see like the little the little flowers that are there in the middle of it. That's a telltale sign that it's Poa. I mean, Poa and Bermuda look completely different to my eye. They, they don't. Even, you mean you can't really mistake Poa for Bermuda, but um, but yeah, that is a sign that it is Poa annua. So um, so that is more than likely what you have in your lawn this year, unless you live in Florida. Your lawn is not out of dormancy uh, as yet. Not it's it's what you're looking at is is likely Poa. So certainty with surfactant um, will uh, will knock that out. It's going to be slower this time of year, but that but that will uh, will work. All right, next up is Eric or Evan C. I got to speed up. I got a lot of questions still to go. He says, hey, Ron, um, how do I choose between Dithiapyr 0.172 pre-emergent and Prodiamine 0.38 pre-emergent? What's the difference? Great question. Uh, is one better than the other in certain situations? That's a great question, um, Evan. So yes, uh, the advantage that Dithiapyr has over Prodiamine is that if you have young crabgrass in your lawn, Dithiapyr has the ability to, to kill young crabgrass, to control young crabgrass. Not fully grown crabgrass, but young crabgrass. Whereas Prodiamine does not. Um, but, but what you'll, you'll find is that that Prodiamine tends to last a little, I mean, what, that's what I found anyways, Prodiamine tends to last a little bit longer as far as the effectiveness of it versus Dithiapyr. But if you are, if you're worried about crabgrass and it's in your little bit, here, here's what I would, I would tell you. If you are going to do it, if you're going to apply one of them now or the first week of February, I would do prodiamine. If you're waiting until, like, say you're watching this video like late February, early March, I would do dithiapyr because it's likely that you already have some young crabgrass germinating, and dithiapyr is a better fit in that scenario than prodiamine is. So either one of them will work fine. Last year, to tell you what, the last year in the spring, I used dithiapyr. Um, as my pre-emergent. And I did it in early February and it worked just fine. But I mean, either again, either one of them can work. The benefit that that dithiopyr has is that it will kill young crabgrass, whereas prodiamine will not. So that is um, that is the, the the biggest difference. I want to think that I want to think that that prodiamine um, as far as as far as the weeds they control or prevent from growing, I think the coverage of prodiamine is a little bit broader too than dithiopyr, I believe. Um, but that the biggest difference is young crabgrass. Is young crabgrass. So prodiamine, if if, if crabgrass has already started growing and prodiamine is put down, not gonna do anything for it. Whereas dithiopyr can kill young crabgrass. So it's really it's really your call between the two, uh, which way you want to go. I've done both and I've gotten a good result with both. The big thing, the the biggest thing that you that you're gonna get um, that's, that's gonna determine whether you get a good result is that you apply them before the weeds show up and that you water them in, or that they get watered in somehow at some point. You know, within a few days of them being applied. If you do that you're going to get a good result. So that's um, between the two of them. I'd say dithiopyr, I lean more towards that if you're watching this later on and you're, you're closer to the lawn starting to come out of dormancy and soil temps are warmer, then um, dithiopyr, a better choice. All right, next up is Vahid Navi. He says, um, how can we have your stuff in Canada for cool season turfs? Uh, yeah, the problem with that, Vahid, is that, um, I mean, there's only a few things really that you can use in Canada, like, um, like prodiamine, I believe, is ban there. I think most, her a lot of herbicides are not, you can't use them in Canada. And then some of the um, other products, like uh, you have to, um, like you either have to have an applicator's license or they're only supposed to be used on like commercial properties. So, so it's, it's, it's a lot of headache, right? It's a lot, I mean, one, you, one, you can't, you can't even ship them legally across the border. And then second, uh, there's also the issue of customs, right? So like, in, let's, let's say that, let's say that in a perfect world, we could Thanos snap and say, Prodiamine is no longer banned in Canada. Let's say that were the case, right? It would be, it's going to be expensive to want to ship it to you because it's going to another country. And then it's going to sit in customs for Lord knows how much time, right? So there is that. Um, so this just, so in general, it's just not, um, it's unfortunate. It's, just, it's not, there's not really an easy way to make that, to, to do that and it be priced in a way that really makes sense. You know what I mean? Like if, if it's, I would almost say that if you can find the products in Canada yourself, like I would just go that route. Just find someone locally that sells them or they can get them for you. Um, and, and go that way. But there's, there's so much, um, like, I mean, growth regulator, I believe you can use in Canada. There's a few products that are okay, but like with herbicides, Canada is very, very strict on, uh, on that, unfortunately. And the granular products, it just, it'd be cost prohibitive. Like it would cost more than the, than the, like shipping would cost more than the product would to get, to get across the border. And no one's gonna, you know, no one's gonna pay that. And then if it gets damaged or anything like that, it's just, it's just a lot of, logistically, it's a lot of headache, um, which is why you don't see a lot of people doing it, unfortunately. So, 
Sorry, I don't have a better answer for you, but hopefully that adds some clarity as to why um, Canada, like what can go there is, is relatively limited. Vernon is up next. He says, hey, Ron, I'm, I'm new to lawn care or taking care of my lawn. Is there some type of calendar to see with specific instructions on what to use uh, based off your grass type? Uh, yeah, so I'm, we are pulling out, we're putting together a, um, so yes, in the academy, in the golf course lawn um, academy, um, which is our paid course, there is a detailed calendar with application rates uh, that are, that, that will work for, let me think, that are, that are fine for cool season and warm season grass. The only modification you really have to, the only thing really you have to, to, to change when it comes to cool season grass is the application rate that you use for Primo Max. For, for growth regulator, you need to go up on the rate in most cases. Um, but if you want a free calendar that gives you something to base off of, gives you, gives you an idea of what to what you can do, I'll show you here. You can go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and go to our blog. And if it will scroll and then scroll down and go to page, the last page, page three, because it was one of the first blog, one of the first articles that I wrote. So go to page three and you will find here the step-by-step -step guide for getting a golf course lawn. And because I like you, Vernon, I'm just going to link this to you directly so you don't have to go through all that trouble. But if you scroll to the very bottom, um, you can find here a a month by month breakdown of what I do that produces a good result. A lot of what's in the academy is based off of this. It's a bit more detailed in the course, but this will tell you what I do in March, April, May, June throughout the um, throughout the growing season. Um, it gives you gives you some um, rates on like the amount of as far as like humic max, what rate I, I would recommend to use for that but I will put that here in the chat for you um, because you're a good guy and you asked a question. I'm gonna give you a link directly to it so it'll save you some time, but go and look at that. I mean, read the entire post. The post is actually really good. Put a lot of work into it. Uh, but if you go scroll to the bottom of that, that will have what you are looking for and it won't cost you anything because the, again, the, the course is, is, pay, is a paid thing, whereas this is, um, is free. We make this available to people that wanna work on their lawns and say, hey, I don't wanna, Maybe I'm not ready for the course yet. I just want to have something to give me a, a, something, a good basis to start. Just go to that, that link on the blog, scroll down. At the bottom, you'll find that, um, that breakdown, that month-by-month -month breakdown. And be sure to read the other articles too. There's, there's tons of great content on there, on questions on, on articles on like fungicide, on like, you know, when is the time to scalp your lawn in the spring? Um, I think next week, we're, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm working, on a, just working on an article on, um, on when to start mowing in the spring. Like what's a good time to start doing that? So a lot of the content that I, I'm making in video in video format, I'm also trying to make that available in a blog format as well. So in case you just someone this wants to, you know, that, that you just want to prefer to read it or you makes it easier for you to share it, then there's that. So if you find it useful, Vernon, uh, please share it with anyone else that you think could benefit. Because a lot of work goes into it to making it, um, making the articles. So I appreciate you guys, uh, you guys reading. All right, next up, let's see here. Um, DeAndre Wright is up next. He says, can you talk about how you would go about selecting the right ratio of macronutrients based on a soil test? Last year, I got recommended a triple 12. Your complete is a 14, 7, 14. Which one? Either one will work. Um, DeAndre, I like the 14, 7, 14, um, over the triple 12, because in addition to it having, um, um, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, you also get some humic acid, you get some kelp. So it's more of a complete product from the standpoint. And it also has some micronutrients in it as well too. So the, the triple 12 is you got your macros and has some micronutrients. The 14714 is your macros, micronutrients, and it also has some biostimulants to help improve soil quality. So some kelp in there and again, some humic acid um, as well. Either one of them will work. Uh, I like the four, if I were, if I were going to do one on my lawn, I would do the 14714. Uh, also the prill size, I can show you, like this is what, and this is not exactly it, but this it's, it's along these lines. This is what the 12, the triple 12 will look like size wise. This is what the 14, 7, 14 will look like size wise. So from a standpoint of um, it getting down in the soil and beginning to work and not, not having any of it just stay on the top of your lawn on the grass where it's not really doing anything. Of these two, you can see that this one is um, it's a much finer prill and it's gonna work better at about getting past the grass into the soil and where it can begin um, correcting the nutrient deficiencies. So out of the two, um, I like the, the 14, seven, 14 complete, but either one, I mean, they're both good products, but of the two, that's the one that I would use. Because in addition to having micronutrients, your macros, 
Um, you also get um, you also get some kelp and some humic acid as well. So, in my opinion, a more a more complete option. All right, next up is Travis Winston. He just says, "Happy Friday, Golf Course Lawn Squad." I think you already said that already, Travis. But appreciate you coming back and leading the charge. Let me check here on the gram. Uh, here he says, <laughs> "Off Road Two NV says, do you know two guys for hire that can take out moles?'" Oh, uh, yeah, man. You know, Al yeah, Alex and I had a lot of fun on that video. I got a lot of hate for that video too. People were like saying, "Why do you have to kill the poor mole?" I'm like, "Man, look, you see what it did to my lawn? Mm -mm. I don't play. Don't come between the man's lawn. I don't mess around when it comes to that." Uh, but yeah, it's I, we had a lot of fun with that. Um, fingers crossed that no moles come back this year. The ghost of that mole does not come back this year. Uh, but we had a lot of fun uh, with that one. All right, Luis is up next. He says, hello, everyone. I'm really excited. I received my first shipment of Essential G. Thank you, Ron, for the quick response. You're very, very welcome. You're very welcome. And then again, um, there's going to be, there's still some in stock now, I believe. If you, in other words, if you're still going to the store and it's not saying sold out, then there's still there's still a little bit more left. We have a, a you know a whole lot more coming the middle of next month, and that should be good for the season. Should be in good shape at that point uh, going forward. But yeah, I'm glad that made it to you safe and sound, and a good job on getting it um, getting it uh, all together. You know what I mean? Yeah, good stuff. All right, next up we have here uh, career choices twelve. Can I stack the academy slash current sale price uh, for Humic Max? Also. Can I have some Carbon Pro G? Alan, I was wondering which products replace them other than Essential G in your lawn care strategy. Um, yeah, I you should be able to buy. No, so, so the sale is only on Humic Max. So there's that. So at question one, yes, that's you can only do that. The only there's only really there's only two ways to get to get a discount in the store. Well, three right now. Look, there's one. There's a product specific discount which is Humic Max. There is you can sell, sign up for the mailing list which you get a one time discount. Um, you only use it once. So like buy a bunch of stuff so you get your discount for that. And then you can join the mobile, um, the SMS, the mobile alerts um, list. Those are the only, the only, only ways to do it. Um, and really, uh, the um, like the the current sale only applies to Humic Max. If you've not used either the mobile alerts one or sign up to the mailing list to get the discount code, you could use that for the academy. Like it will apply to the academy. Um, so that's that. Um, and then the next up, you're saying. I have some Carbon Pro LG. What products replace them? Yeah, so um, what I would say is that uh, Carbon Pro G is replaced with Essential G. Essential G. Carbon Pro G and Essential G are both made by Miramichi Green, so they're both excellent products. Essential G is the newer formulation of Carbon Pro G. So whereas Carbon Pro G is biochar and compost, um, Essential G is biochar, compost, reclaimed coffee grounds, humate, and silicon. I think that's everything. So there's more in it. Than there was in what's it's what's in um, Carbon Pro G, so it's just newer formulation. As far as Carbon Pro L, um, the Carbon Kit, the Carbon Kit is is what replaces that. So I can show you. So if you go to shop and then go to Miramichi Green Biosimilants, so Essential G, this replaces Carbon Pro G, and this Golf Course Lawn Carbon Kit replaces Carbon Pro L. This is better than Carbon Pro L in in, in pretty much every way. You have more kelp, you have a high percentage of kelp, you have um, the micronized carbon, the, the really 12% micronized carbon between the, the kelp product and the really zero product, which you don't have that in, in um, Carbon Pro L at all. And then you have the uh, microbial package, which I think Carbon Pro L has a, has a slight microbial package as well, but it's not, it's definitely not as concentrated or as dense as what you get in Biospectrum. So this replaces Carbon Pro L and this, replaces Carbon Pro G. So hope that helps career choices. And if you need anything else, let me know. It's a good question. All right, next up is Brad Larson. He says, hey Ron, what are your thoughts on burning Bermuda instead of scalping it in the early spring? Who, did someone on YouTube make a video about burning the grass? I gotta look and see. I'm sure this, all this question's gotta be coming from somewhere. Can you do it? Yes. Do I recommend that you do it? No, because in most places, it is not legal to set your lawn on fire. In most subdivisions anyway, you can't, you're not supposed to do that and you'll get the wrong kind of attention. You have the police show up and or the fire department show up and you just, it's just not worth it. Um, are you going to kill your grasp of your lawn by doing that? No, you're not. Um, but you can just scalp the lawn and achieve the same thing. You know what I mean? So I just, I, I would not do it because most people are not, are not permitted to do it in the areas that they live. So that's my thoughts on it. Uh, next up is, he says, I've got a new Swordman Electra for the season and would like to avoid the wear and tear from scalping. Yes, yeah, so I wouldn't scalp with your Swordman. I definitely, I wouldn't do that. I would use, uh, you know, I would, 
I would rent a rotary mower before I did that. I would I would get a rotary mower and scalp the lawn with that versus um, or borrow one from a friend. If you have a friend that lets you borrow their mower, just buy them a brand new blade after you're done with it. Um, I would do that route. I would not scalp. I, I wouldn't scalp with a with a with a, with a swordman. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I think it's gonna. Be, that's a bit. That's a bit too hard. A hard on them. So I, I, if you do that, you're gonna end up putting a, a belt on after you're, you're done with it. So I. I would recommend. I'd highly recommend against <laughs> against uh, doing that. Get like a rotary, or if you can get a true cut, something chain driven that will work well too. But I would not. I would not do that with a um, with a swordman. All right, your next point here, it says, also got my Prodiamine from your site down this evening before the rain on Sunday. Thanks for the quick shipment. You are very, very welcome. That's one thing we try and do, man. We try and get the stuff out as quickly as possible. Um, you know, that, cause I know how I am. Like once I order, once I hit order, I'm, I'm like, I'm refreshing my email, waiting for tracking to come through. And then I'm waiting for it to show up at my door. So I say, you know, I always ask myself, what would I want? Like how do, how do you recreate the Amazon experience in lawn care? And that's what we're trying to do. It's not, not easy to do, but that's what the, uh, that's what the goal is. I know how you guys are. You're impatient. You want what you want when you want it. And I get that, right? Because I'm I'm kind of the same way. All right. Michael Daniels is up next. He says, I live in the St. Louis area. When can I start reapplying humic acid and root growth stimulant to my tall fescue? I like to do it when the lawn is growing, um, Michael. It's your call. I believe some people will say you can do that now if you want. Um, you know, but I... But Typically, when the lawn is growing, is when I start uh, start doing uh, introducing those types of products. So, like the granular biosimulants, I do that year round. As long as the ground isn't frozen, which it doesn't freeze in Georgia, you can do it every single month. Uh, the liquids, I like to do those or save those for whenever the lawn is um, is waking up. So, like next, not next month because we're not in February yet. In March, that would be the first month when I would break out my carbon kit, break out my uh, Release Zero, my, my kelp, my biospectrum, and spray the lawn with that. That is when I would do it. You're not going to really hurt. It's not you're not going to hurt anything by doing that now. Um, and if you, you still have a fescue lawn, so if your fescue lawn is still you're still out there mowing it and it's still growing, then yeah, you can do that. But I'm, I'm answering this question um, as if you're my neighbor in Georgia and you have Bermuda, which you're not. You live in St. Louis and you have fescue. So if your fescue lawn is if you're still mowing your fescue lawn and the ground isn't frozen where you are and you want to go out and you put down your humic acid and root and your RGS, yeah, by all means go for it. But in in Georgia. If you're my neighbor next door, I'd say, no, don't do it right now because the grass is, is dormant. I mean, you're not going to hurt anything, but there's really not a whole lot of benefit to doing it now, in my opinion. Next up is Colin Rainford. He says, what should I use for grubs in centipede grass? The same thing you use for grubs on Bermuda. What I would use for grubs, I'll show you a couple options for Colin. So we go over to shop and then insecticide, fungicide or fungicide insecticide, if I read my menu option correctly. You've got, um, for grubs, you've got two products. We carry two products that will do it. You've got Caravan, which is an insecticide and fungicide product, which is okay. But if you, all you care about is grubs, I would go with a Celeprin. It comes in both a granular form and a liquid form. If you have a sprayer, like a backpack sprayer or a, or a two-gallon like pump sprayer, and um, then the Celeprin, the SC, the liquid, is what I would go with because it gives you more control over application rates. Um, if you're applying it at a lighter rate, it covers a little bit more than the Acelaprin G. If you're if you're applying them at the 0 0.20 rate that I show in the video, so in here I've got like a video that shows how I like to use it. Um, if you do if you uh, apply it at that 0 0.20 rate, you get about the same coverage as you would get with uh, with uh, the granular. So if you if you care about grubs, I would use Acelaprin G or a Celeprin SC, one of those two. Either one of them will work well. This is this is the Mac Daddy. This is about as good as you can get um, as far as an insecticide in, um, in your lawn. And the nice thing about it is that while it's a very effective in insecticide, so it kills grubs, bluegrass weasels, um, um, bill bugs, um, pretty much all turf caterpillars, so sod web worms, army worms, um, it does not kill or does not harm invertebrates like earthworms or um, pollinators like bees, which is good, right? So it kills the stuff we don't want in our grass or in our lawns because it does damage, but it doesn't harm the stuff that is that we that we care about, that we want, that, that's good for the environment, right? So a celeprin is what I would say to go with. That's um that would be my recommendation. That is what I use on, on my lawn. Nothing wrong with caravan, but a celeprin is a better product if especially if all you care about is grub control. All right, and you can use it on centipede. All right, uh, David uh Walker is up next. He says best herbicide. Uh, best herbicide for Poanua, I have Bermuda in Houston. Uh, best. There's a couple of options. I'll tell you a couple of options. I'll give you the pros and cons. So you can use Image, which is 
um, like soil absorb, it's root absorbed and it's very slow. Not really what I would recommend. Um, you can use, if you have a very large property, like an acre, you can use a product called Negate. It's a very, it's a very good post-emergent herbicide, but I don't recommend that for smaller lawns because the way you have to mix it, um, you end up with a bunch of product that you have to dispose of somehow because it, the, the intermediate mix is really only good for four to six weeks. So what I would say then, uh, if you don't fall into either of those categories, one, you're impatient, you don't want to wait for a massacre, like the image product, and you don't have a very large property where using a product like Negate makes sense, is to use um, Certainty. So I would use this along with the surfactant, and that will produce a good result as far as getting rid of POA in your lawn. So I'll show you what I'm talking about as far as what I would mix it with. So if we go back to the store and you go to shop and weed killer, um, I would use Certainty, which is your, um, your uh, herbicide. And then I would mix with it, I would mix a surfactant. So this, these two, Certainty and surfactant, these two is what I would mix together to target POA. If you, um, if you wanna see where you've sprayed, you can add a little bit of marker dye as well too. That, this, is, this one is optional, but for best, because this one is not really going to add to, um, this, is, this is not gonna make Certainty more effective. This is just gonna make sure that you have good coverage and that you don't over apply or under apply. So from that standpoint, it is good to include too. So as a, as a bare minimum, Certainty and the spreader sticker, these two, this one and this one, um, as an optional extra, the, the marker dye is also a good idea. If you need broadleaf control, you didn't ask about this, but if you if you need like broadleaf control to where you can take care of spurge um, and other other weeds that you might be fighting in the summertime, then there's a kit that includes Certainty, Celsius, the the surfactant, and a marker dye. All four of these and saves you a little bit of money all in one. So if you want something for, for warm season grass, this kit includes all four of these and is cheaper than buying all of them separately. But if all you care about is POA, then just Certainty and the surfactant is what you will, uh, what you would, would need to go with. That is what I would recommend for POA. It's very good against POA. Just use surfactant with it. So hope that helps, David. If you need anything else, uh, let me know. And in, in the product descriptions, in the product descriptions, uh, you'll see a video that shows how I like to mix it. So follow that, and you should get a pretty good result. That's how that's how I like to use the product. There's, there's more, I mean, you read the product label. There's multiple rates, and there are rates that are actually quite a bit higher than the rates that I use. But I've had good results using the lower rates. If you can use less herbicide and still get a good result, why wouldn't you, right? Stuff's expensive. You don't want to use more of it than you actually really have to. All right, next up is JC105 says, thanks, Ron. I owe most of my lawn success to you. That's actually not true. I may have told you what you need to do, but you actually did it. You'd be surprised. Like, like you could tell people what they need to do or what you suggest they do that can help them get a better result, but if they don't actually do it, they don't get a good result. So yes, I may have given you some tips and tricks on how to get a better lawn, but you actually did it. You actually doing it is what got you the result. So yeah, so we'll say team effort. How about that? We'll say team effort. It says, I have about 600 square feet that I put down in the end of September. Is it safe to put pre-emergent down now? What kind of grass do you have? If it is, hopefully you tell me here that it's Bermuda or something. If it's Bermuda, yeah, it is. It says, uh, thanks, Ron, I'm almost of it to you. Uh, I think in September I laid about 600 square feet of Bermuda. Is it safe to use pre-emergent now? Yes, I would, I would. I My lawn, I apply, it was sodded in December when the house was built and it got pre-emergent in March. So it got pre-emergent like three months later. So if it was, if you put down your sod in September, yeah, you're, you're good to go. Shouldn't be a problem at all. It's a good way to keep weeds out of your lawn and uh, Bermuda will tolerate pre-emergent just fine. No issues uh, there at all. Michael Kuhn is up is up next. He says, uh, thank you for what you do. You are the goat of lawn care YouTubers. I don't know about that, but I appreciate the kind words. Uh, I, you know, if, if you want to give me the, if you want to give me that title for live streaming, I'll take that. I'll, I'll, I'll hold on to that. But as far as like all YouTubers, long care, eh, I don't know. There's, there's people that are definitely, definitely bigger and, um, that are definitely bigger than I am. So can't, can't quite take that one as yet. It says, do you believe specialty grass seed actually better than the box store variety? I, I do. Yeah, I do. Uh, because what you're going to find is if you, let's say you're going to go buy, um, Bermuda grass seed. Let's say you're a glutton for punishment and you want to go see Bermuda, right? If you go out and you get like um, Yukon or Rio or Monaco from like um, from Hancock seed, from like a place like a seed, like a seed farm, a place that sells, um, you know, quality seed, specialty seed, what you are mainly going to get or what you are going to get is that grass seed. You're going to get that cultivar. The stuff that you get, like the big box stores, there's normally other stuff mixed in with it. You know what I mean? And as far as like, say you were doing Bermuda, 
it's going to be common Bermuda. It's not going to be, it's just not going to be a great, um, it's not going to be as good as the, the, the cultivars as you can get if you go with a more specialty, um, a more specialty seed. And given the fact that grass seed is, is pretty permanent, like once it grows in, it's, it's there, it's pretty hard to get rid of. The, 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 the price difference between them um, really shrinks over time. And especially if you get something that visually you like looking at. So for cool season grass seed, I don't know. I've never, I've never seeded a cool season lawn to know how the quality of the grass seed is in the big box stores. But I can tell you that I don't see very many uh, YouTubers or most people that, 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 um, that seed their lawns or oversee their lawns getting their grass seed from the big box stores. They go out and they go to, you want cool season grass, they'll go to Baron Brug or somewhere else and get like their, their seed from there. And then for your warm season grass, they'll go to like, um, like Hancock or one of or someplace similar to that. There's a couple other places, um, that, that do, that are like, like seed, like places that specialize in grass seed. I would do that given that the, given what it takes to establish it and that once it's there, it's there. So, you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, it's the, the, the quality of what you will get is going to be better with the specialty and you will get, only, you'll get, you have a much better chance of getting only what you want instead of having other weeds and other, just other, other stuff mixed in, mixed in with the grass seed. You know what I mean? So I, I would not, I would not do that. I would not do, um, grass seed from the big box stores. I would get a, a specialty seed um, if you're gonna go that route. Because as you'll find out, seeding a lawn is a lot of work and ideally you only wanna have to do it once. All right, next up is, uh, he says, P.S. If you chose a, a different subject matter, um, you would take in the dough. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, the thing is what I do, for, what I do professionally, I work in the information security uh, space. And I've, I've had people, some people ask me to say, Hey, you know, you should do like a, do like a, like a, um, a YouTube channel on information security or like a tech channel. And I could do the, the, the problem is, is what I do for work. It's too close. Like doing a channel, doing a, a, a YouTube, YouTube content on the information security space. Like it would be, it'd be a pain because I have to make sure like, like what I'm talking about, um, like I have to get it clear with, with our, like our legal team and just, it just creates a lot of hassle. You know what I mean? Like I have to be more careful about what I say and not say, um, if I'm talking about a field that is, um, like what I do professionally, whereas like, you know, not, I mean, at some level you could say I do like grass or do lawn care professionally at some level too, as well too. Right. But that is, that's separate. So, um, so yeah. And if I had to do anything different, Michael, outside of, um, outside of lawn care, I might do like a tech channel that is not around about information security. So like a, like a product review channel. So like cameras, lenses, cinematography, that kind of stuff. Cause I enjoy that. I, I could do a channel about something like that, but I, I don't, I don't have the time. I hardly have time now as it is. I definitely don't have time to start another YouTube channel. It's way, it would be way, way, way too much work. And I'd rather, I would rather like my personality type. I'm the kind of person that I'd rather, I'd rather not do something than do a crappy job out of it. Nothing that I'm, I'm not, I'm not okay with being bad at something for a while, but I want to have enough time to put the time into it, to put the reps into it, to get good at it. And if you start dividing your attention, it becomes difficult to do that. So hence why like work, karate, grass, that's, um, that's like outside of like spending time with friends and family. That's, that's what I do with my time. And that keeps me pretty busy. All right, JG's up next. She says, "Please, everyone, clown on LG." He, man, he's something else, man. Uh, JG, you know what? You must. You're a saint. I, I haven't met you, but you know what? I can tell you have the patience of Job. Bless your heart. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. All right, uh, Travis Dowdy says, "Just give more money to him to keep Ron doing these." I, I'll keep doing them, guys. I mean, I appreciate the super chats. I do appreciate all the love and support. I really do. I mean, you guys. You know, the, the super chats are a great way to support the channel, but also if the content is useful and there's a product that we have in the store that you could find useful, like the fertilizers, the herbicides, you want to support us that way too. That's also pretty awesome. But, uh, but yeah, I, I do this because one, I enjoy helping the community out. It's a way for me to, um, to learn about what the challenges you guys have and in, in your space. And also another thing too is you guys may not realize it. But I have, when I was, and I'm sure I've shared this before, but when I was younger, I had like a pretty bad speech impediment where I would stutter a lot. And um, so, which is why sometimes when I get excited, I begin to speak very quickly. You guys will notice that. So this, if you look at my content or my, um, my live streams, like when I was first doing it versus now, I've been able to slow down and get better at speaking. So, so, so it's a, it's, there's multiple benefits to it outside of helping you guys out as well, right? It's a way for me to, to practice just, just speaking more slowly. Uh, which is a challenge for me, right? So lots of lots of um, lots of reasons why I uh, I do it. You guys, when I was younger, I was in teens. It was like uh, 
like Speedy Gonzales. That was very difficult to uh, to understand. So still difficult to understand now, but you know, I've gotten better at it. So there you go. All right, next up is TNDC07. TNDC07 says, what are the ramifications of putting out too much prodiamine pre-emergent? Are you asking because it's just hypothetically or are you asking because you've already done it? It says, I think I weighed out double, maybe triple the amount back in the fall, Bermuda, 2,000 square feet in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, the, the too much of it, um, you can get some root clubbing. It's, uh, you can, you can, I mean, you can damage the lawn like anything else. You can, you can cause, uh, you can cause damage. Um, the same thing as putting out like too much herbicide. You can cause damage to the, to the grass. So what I would say, TNDC07, is if you did too much prodiamine, let's just assume, let's, let's just say you went heavy. We don't know for sure because you're not sure exactly what the rate was you did. You think double, maybe triple, which is a lot. Um, what we can do is this um, spring, if you're gonna do pre-emergent, which I still think you should do that, let's not do prodiamine. Let's not do prodiamine. Let's, um, especially since you went heavier, if you want to wait till, where are you, Raleigh? If you're in Raleigh, if you want to wait till like mid-February and then go with dithiapare and you apply that at the correct rates, like read the read the bag label, read the, the, the rates on the bag, set your spreader to the rates on the bag, like weigh out how much you need for your lawn and put that down and you'll be fine. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to go into the assumption that you over applied for diamine. So we don't really want to use that again in the springtime. Um, but um, but yeah, like anything else, like if you, if you apply too much herbicide, which, which pre-emergent, you know, it, technically that's what it is, uh, you can cause damage to the uh, to the grass. So the thing, thing about prodiamine though, is it tends to be, um, it's not it's not as long lasting as like, uh, say like spectacle. Like say you over apply spectacle, like that, the, 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 the negative side effects of that, you're gonna see a lot longer because it just hangs around in the soil much longer than prodiamine does. Prodiamine's about uh, four months, four months thereabouts if you, have, if you have a good application. So if you did it in the fall, so say September, so September, October, November, December, January, we're like four or five months away. If you apply next month and you're not using prodiamine, you use Zythiopyr, you should be okay. But again, don't like go at the label rates. There's, yeah, think about this, this um, perspective, guys. Think, look at it this way. Like the people, like the, the manufacturers that make pre-emergent, like they're in business to sell pre-emergent, right? So they would sell, you know, it, it's, it's, in their, it's in their best interest to sell as much of the stuff as they can. However, they don't want to sell, they, 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 but the rates they give you are such that you will get a good result, you're not going to harm the environment, and you're not going to harm your grass. And when you're using prodiamine, like when you're using these products, you're using professional grade products. So these are the, these are you know they're, they're they're products that there's the same stuff that like True Green or any of the, or the places around you that, that that spray lawns. Like this is the same stuff that they're using, same stuff you're putting on your lawn. So you have to respect the label. You have to you have to you know measure once, twice, three times, double check it, double check your math, and really make sure that you're applying it at those correct rates because that's going to ensure that you get a good result. Kind of like with 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 um with Primo. You know, I had to start telling people in videos that, hey, whenever you measure this out, if you put it in like a measuring cup, like before you had this, right? Before you had, because now that we have it in a bottle that has this on here, I don't have to really say that as much anymore. But before, if you had, I don't have one here. Um, if you, actually I do. If you took, uh, I mean, this is this is too large. This is too large. But say you take like a, a um, like a like a quarter of a gallon, right? If you put like an ounce of, of um, say you had like teen or something, right? Or podium and you put like an ounce of, Grant Rose regulator in a container this size, it looks like practically nothing. It looks like you've got like, like, like you are just hardly anything in there. Even if you have a smaller one, it doesn't look like a whole lot. And people will then say, well, that can't be right. That, you know, that's not, certainly that's not enough. I gotta like go up double or triple the rate. Maybe I gotta pour more out, pour more, put a little bit more in there. And you just don't have to do that. Like the, the rates that they give you are all you need to get a, a, an excellent result. So same thing with pre-emergent. I know you just made a mistake, TNDC07, but just want to let everyone know that for any of you guys that are, are gearing up, this is your first time, you're going to be applying a pre-emergent pre -emergent or really any products to your lawn, just respect the label. Like you're going to get a great result without going, um, going too heavy on the application. But in your case, I would say, let's switch to something else. Let's switch to like Dithyropair for your spring app. Let's not do... Let's not do uh, prodiamine because you probably went too heavy in the fall based on what you're you're saying here. Devin's up next. Demary's in the house. He says, 52 days until spring. Can't wait. Yeah, man, it's going to be awesome. And with you, it's it's probably a true 52 days because, well, I mean, you're talking about like the actual, like when it's considered spring, it's the same for everybody. But as far as when we have spring type weather, for you, you 
probably got a little bit longer to wait than uh, than we do here in the southeast. So, so yeah, I gotta get you back on the show again, Devin. Whenever you got time, I know you're out busy, you know, the house and traveling and keeping uh, the wife, you know, spending time with the wife. I get that, but if you can find some time in your heart, so at some point, just come hang out with us, you know, us lowly um, grass nerds for an hour or so. We don't ask for very much. We'd appreciate it. You know, you can come hang out with us. We're fun. All right, next up is John um, Urea, or Ur, uh, Ihara, Ihara, I think. He says, hey, Ron, here in Hawaii, our Bermuda doesn't really go dormant. Should I be scalping twice a year? Thanks. Yeah, uh, yeah, because, so I'll, let's talk about that a little bit, John. So scalping at the beginning of the season is a great way to yeah, clean out the dormant material, clean out the dead grass, just to give the lawn a good reset, right? But I am a fan of also doing a mid-season scalp. So let's say late June timeframe, um, especially if you're real mowing or you're cutting the lawn at shorter heights, what you're gonna find is the Bermuda is gonna start getting thicker and thicker, like very dense. And whereas you didn't have cutting or scalping issues before, you'll start having that if you don't do something to thin out the lawn. So in your case, you might be doing it three times a year. You might be doing it in the spring. You might be doing like a mid-season scalp whenever you know the temperatures are very high. And then if it's still growing in you know September, October, November, you might be doing another one then, you know what I mean? So you might be doing three a year. But, uh, but yes, uh, a, at least one in the spring, if you're here in like Georgia, um, you have our climate is good, but given that you're in Hawaii and it doesn't go dormant and it's, and you're mowing year round, um, I would say once, especially during the hot time of the year, especially, and, and if you're mowing at shorter heights, you're going to find that it gets really thick and you'll start having cutting, um, like, like scalping issues because it's just getting so thick. So, um, a mid season uh, scalp is a, is a good idea as well. A way to not have to do that is if you have the ability to rent a, um, a turf rake or a verticutter, that's another way that is less aggressive than scalping. It's not, not as, I mean, visually it's not going to make the lawn look quite as ugly as scalping is going to do. It's a way to thin out the lawn a bit, um, you know, and, and, still have it look relatively nice when you're done with it. Like verticutting, if you do, if you set up the verticutter um, properly, you can't tell too much that the lawn has been verticut. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll see the lines and the color might take a slight hit, but it's not like when you scalp. When you scalp, it's gonna look like you scalped it. You know what I mean? So if you can get your hands on a verticutter, that could be a way in the middle of this, or that is a way in the middle of the season to thin out the lawn without negatively impacting the appearance too much. Great question. Next up is Jason Sewell. He says, hey, y'all, just finished my pre-scalp. Been having mid-70s here in STX. Is that San Antonio, Texas? STX or South Texas? San Antonio? I'm not sure what it is. I'm, I'm going to guess San Antonio, Texas, maybe. He's, I got the new reel mower. Uh, so it took the rotary down to one inch. We'll do that a couple of weeks, then let the real fun begin. Nice. Very nice, very nice. So you got a new reel mower. You didn't say what kind of reel mower it is. Normally, Jason, there would be a point deduction for this, but because... You got your pre-scalp and you did get a pre a real mower. We're gonna still clap it up for you. We're gonna give you some props just because. One more. Good job, sir. I'm sure your lawn's gonna look awesome uh, because of it. Let's see if we have any other questions here in the Instagram. I don't think so. Waving off to the folks, saying hi, making sure I'm not being rude or too rude. Nope, no questions. Just folks coming in to hang out and, uh, and watch the show. Very nice. All right, next up is Aten Adenraka, Adenraka, or Edenraka. He says, hey, Ron, I'm in Henry County, Georgia. My backyard is all weeds, trees, and dogs. So you got trees, you got dogs, and weeds. Okay, that's, that's, not, that's not a great comment. I mean, the dogs are okay, but that's not a great combination. Uh, it's hard on grass. He says, uh, I would like to replace my swamp with a grassy backyard. What kind of grass is best in a shady area? Thanks in advance. Depends on how much shade you're talking about. Um, Bermuda will not grow well in shade. Full stop. Period. There is no such thing as shade tolerant Bermuda. Full stop. Like it's just not gonna. It's not. It's just not really a thing. Uh, zoysia, zoysia grass. Depending on how much sunlight you have. Cause, I mean, again, I, well, you say you have shade, but I don't know how much shade. Zoysia grass does better than Bermuda in uh, in a shaded area, but it still needs sunlight. It still needs you know five six hours of direct sunlight, um, whereas Bermuda needs like all the sunlight. Um, if outside of that, let's say you have a lawn, like your backyard is fully covered, like it's like it's like a, like a, a thick canopy, like it's it's shaded, like um, you know, fairly like year round, um, uh, even during the summer. In that case, going with something like fescue could work. 
because if you go like to uh, to like Buckhead, if you go to if you, any of you guys that are in the Atlanta area, you go to Buckhead is like so. Buckhead is like um, it's like an affluent part of, of 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 the Atlanta area, but also you find there's a lot of old neighborhoods there. So that older neighborhoods, big trees, lots of lots of cover. Um, in that area, uh, in those what you'll find for lawns there is you'll see a lot of fescue. You'll see more fescue in that, those areas than you do Bermuda grass because. It's the lawn, even in the summertime, there's a lot of shade that that prevents the fescue from getting beaten up too badly from all the summer heat. So it depends if your lawn is heavily shaded, which is what it kind of sounds like, then you could look into to fescue. The problem is that if, you're, if your lawn is only like partially shaded and, and it, it gets some direct sunlight, then, you know, fescue, you're going to spend a lot of money watering it to try and keep it alive during the, the summertime. So it's, it's, this question is difficult to answer without pictures. But um, Bermuda is definitely a no. Zoysia is a maybe, depending on how much sunlight you're getting. And fescue is also a maybe, depending on how much shade you have. So more shade, fescue, a little bit of shade, zoysia, any kind of amount of shade, Bermuda is a no-go. So um, hope that helps. As far as some ways to help, um, you know, get rid of the swamp, or I mean, as far as weeds, uh, if you've got like a salad bowl, you can go with. Um, I'm not sure what kind of weeds you're dealing with, but any like three way, any any uh, three way herbicide like like spectricide, you can go with Celsius and Certainty if you want to as well. Like that will will do a pretty good job cleaning up cleaning up the lawn. But then once you got that done, deciding on which grass type is going to be based on how much shade, how much shade you uh, you have. So that that's a, that's a tough one. Um, one thing I would tell you too, um, Essen, is uh, if you have any kind of drainage problems in the lawn, fix those before you go out and invest a bunch of money in putting, you know, zoysia sod in or fescue or whatever. Before you put the grass in, like make sure the lawn drains properly. Fix any of the, um, any of those kinds of, um, any of those kinds of issues in, in the lawn. You know what I mean? Like don't, um, don't, uh, don't go out there and don't fix it and, and, and not address the environmental problems that are going to hold you back from having a great lawn um, and then put grass down and, and just and just hope for the best. That's just not going to work out very well. So, you know, example, the, the, the blog post that, that was released today, this one on like, um, you know, Money Backyard Solution, if your lawn looks like this after it rains and it stays looking like that for like a day or so, like in other words, the water isn't draining, we're going to want to fix this before we introduce any kind of grass type. You know what I mean? So it just, it really depends on where you are. I don't have pictures of your lawn to really know, but, uh, but I just want to, you know, just want to give you some, some other stuff to think about in addition to which, or sort of in addition to choosing the, uh, you know, choosing which, which grass you want to go with. So hope that helps, sir. Um, next up we got uh, Travis saying it's a super chat war. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, LG, he has to win. He's got to have it, got to have it his way. And then next up, we have Gary Kelly Jr. He says, Ron, I got a friendly competition with my neighbor. So he just got his Earthway spreader. It's a nice spreader. I think he's, he's, he's I mean, I got. I have to give one point in the neighbor column. He says, he decided to leave the empty box. <laughs> really? <laughs> he decided to leave the empty box in his driveway so I can see it. So I put my flows on box outside. <laughs> So it's equipment warfare. So he has his, his his earthway. He puts it like you know the trash day is coming out. So he puts it down there and just kind of he kind of turns it turns the box towards your house. You can you can see you can see what equipment he's working with. Uh, that's pretty good. That's good. I like that. That's pretty awesome. That is uh that is pretty awesome. Hey, listen. And you say your your wife just rolls her eyes. There are worse things than you got you could be doing than just you know having a, a friendly competition with your neighbor. Here's the thing though, I I gotta tell you though, uh, Gary, you gotta watch. You know your neighbor's not messing around. Like he got you know he went with an Earthway. He's either watching the live stream or he's researching his equipment. So you gotta make sure you gotta make sure you're on your on your A game. You know he's he's coming for you. And I don't I don't want you to kind of think that you know because I've I've done it a year or so and I've got you know. I'm ahead. I got all this info that you know you can't can't get knocked off the uh, off the perch. Or just you know the fact that he that he put that out there for you to see. That's like shots fired. You know, so you gotta gotta make sure you gotta make sure you, you you take it seriously, take the threat seriously, and respond accordingly in a friendly way, of course. You know what I mean? Like if, for example, 
if you're using like the carbon kit, you know, if you're using the carbon kit, you may want to, um, you know, if you can put that in the trash, like put that like in a black bag first, like, you know, put that in the trash bag and then put that trash bag in your trash dumpster. Like I wouldn't put that, just, I wouldn't put your, your products just out in the open for him to see what you're working with. Now he might go in there and look, but I mean, you, know, you wanna, you wanna do some things to kind of, kind of hide back, hold back what you're working with, unless you guys are cool and you know, you're just gonna, you're gonna share your entire program with you, with him. But I, I, I kind of get the feeling that you guys aren't quite there yet. Not quite there yet, so. Something to think about. All right, next up is Nathan Merrill. He says, great stuff, Ron. I plan on using uh, the 1608 Humic Max Carbon Pro-G and uh, 901C as part of the Liquid Carbon Kit. Yeah, that works, man. That works, that's, uh, that's a good program. So yeah, Humic Max and um, the 901C Carbon Kit is great. That's what I rolled with last season. Uh, you can get a great result with that. And if you got it like a, a site one nearby where you can get Carbon Pro-G, by all means, you know what I mean? You can absolutely, um, you can absolutely, um, you can absolutely do that. Um, oh, cool. We have, we have, we have our guys, you know, here's the thing. The trolls haven't been around for a while. So we got one in the, in the, uh, in the live stream. It looks like the, uh, the moderators have already given, given him exactly what he needs. You know, the band bat. So until next time, time for the new account. So next up is Genesis. He says, how can I get my grass level on a budget? Um, on a budget. So it, 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 so here's the thing to get it level. There's some things that, that are, that are, that are kind of unavoidable, right? You're going to have to put down sand and or soil. That, that That's the thing. Like to, to level the uneven parts of the lawn, you have to put some kind of product down. That, that's got to happen. And uh, now the way to do it on a budget is to do it yourself. Like do it yourself, get friends and family to help you out. Like that's the way to do it. Um, Cause really, really leveling the lawn doesn't take much. Like really all you need is the material and a leveling rake. Now, I do like to aerate the lawn as part of the process. Like before I, you, you go out and you put down your top dressing mix, your lawn leveling mix, aerating the lawn is a, uh, is a good idea. You know, I think, I think you're gonna get a better, like the, the top dressing mix is gonna integrate better with the soil if you, if you do that. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's not outside of like the material that you need and having enough of it and a leveling rake and a wheelbarrow maybe there's not there's not a ton else i'll put you this way i don't even own a wheelbarrow like my the ones you guys see me using the video i have a friend of mine that has one and every time i'm going to do a top dressing job because i really only need the wheelbarrow when i'm doing top dressing i just go over and i say hey man can i borrow a wheelbarrow for a weekend he's like yeah sure no problem you pick it up and i grab it and i use it and then i take it back to him so a, a leveling rake is the only piece of equipment that's kind of that's kind of a specialty piece of equipment that you can't really rent you're not gonna you're not gonna find that at any of your big box stores or most equipment rental places. So that's the the one thing that I'd really recommend that you buy that's gonna help you have a good result with your top dressing. Um, but um, but yeah, it's, you, you have to have material and you have to have some way to spread it. So the only thing really that you can save on then is labor. And really that's the most expensive part. If you hire a service, the labor is really is the most expensive part. Like the actual top dressing mix in it itself is not that expensive. Like I like the stuff from SuperSod, like it's a good product, um, but you don't have to use that. You can find a local place, a local supplier that can get you a sand and soil blend that's gonna be quite a bit um, less expensive than the level mix. And that's a way to save money. And then all you're out then really is just a the cost of um, you know a leveling rake and, and your time. And again, I would get some friends to help you out. So that's that's the way to, to do it on a on a budget. Um, but yeah, the, there's there's no way unfortunately to get away from the cost of the material unless you've got someone that can just is going to give it to you for free. Like that just costs what it costs, and there's not really a way around that unfortunately. So hope that helps, uh, Genesis. If you decide to level, you know, a good time to do that if you're in this area of Southeast Georgia is the late April, May time frame. So you've still got time between now and then to work out, you know, how you're going to go about doing it. All right, next up is Kevin Beatty. He says, should I hold off on applying pre-emergent if you're expecting wintry weather next week? Um, where are you in the country, uh, Kevin? Now, here's the thing. Between now and really end of March, we're gonna have cold, it's gonna get cold, it's gonna get warm, it's gonna get cold, it's gonna get warm. You're gonna have days in the low 60s and days in the 30s. And it's gonna be like that, with more of a move trending, obviously more towards days in the 60s as you know, as the um, we get out of winter and getting into the spring. Um, but if you're talking about in, Georgia, if you're in Georgia, um, I would still get your pre-emergent down in early February. I really would. I'm, yes. We, are there going to be some cold snaps along the time, all along the way between now and when you're out mowing regularly? Yes, absolutely. But that's not going to hurt or or negatively affect your pre-emergent. So I, I would still get that done. And I'm, I'm answering this question 
as if you are in Georgia. If you're somewhere up north, then you still got time. You know, you, you you're 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 more on that end of February time frame for getting your pre-emergent applied. I'm answering this question as far as next week if you are in the Southeast United States. So hope that helps, sir. Then uh, next up is uh, Michael Kuhn. He says, well, I think uh, MKBHD, the tech YouTuber, makes like 30 million a month. I don't know if he makes that. He makes, I'm, really, I'm sure MKBHD does pretty well. Um, but also MKBHD is huge. That's, I mean, you're talking about one of the biggest YouTubers and probably as far as, far as like tech YouTubers, um, probably one of the best known ones. Like he's been doing it forever. Um, and the 30 million that he makes, or the money that he makes, I'm not sure if it's like 30 million a month. I don't, I don't, I don't believe it's that much, but if it, but if it's even if it's 30 million a year, let's just say it's that, um, it's not just from YouTube. It's from YouTube. It's from like brand deals and sponsorships. It's, it's a combination of things that he uses to, to, to get to that, to get to that number. So, and it just takes, it just takes time. You know, it takes time to get up to, to work up to that. And it's not really my thing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a grass guy. You know what I mean? Besides, if I left off and started doing like tech reviews, you guys would miss me, right? Because I wouldn't do that and this. And I think you guys would prefer me doing this. So I'll say the do, keep doing this and then I'll let, and MKBHD will do tech. How about that? Okay, Jonathan Dawes is up next. He says, do I need to scalp when applying Prodiamine pre-emergent? No, it's not strictly necessary. You don't have to do that. I like to do it because if I'm going to be cleaning it, if I'm going to, it's a good time to get some of the debris out of the lawn and it, it makes it easier for your pre-emergent to get into the soil. Is it strictly necessary? No. Like the places around here that are applying um, pre-emergent, like they're not making the, their, their customers scalp their lawns before they, uh, they, um, they apply the pre-emergent. The reason why I do it, why I do the pre-scalp has less to do with pre-emergent and more to do with, I don't want to have a huge mess on my hands in March. You know what I mean? If I take out, if I do like a pre-scalp, I get rid of some of the material now. And then when I, when March time rolls around, I've got less that I have to cut off to get the lawn ready for the spring season. You know what I mean? This year, I, I may, I'm not gonna have very much to do at all because with all the turf raking and as clean as I've kept the lawn, there's not gonna be very much to come out of it when I, when I do eventually scalp it. You know what I mean? So, um, so to answer your question, no, it's not, it is not necessary. Like, like, like scalping, like the, like scalping and pre-emergent are not required. Most like 99.9% .9 of people that, that apply Prodiamine don't scalp their lawns prior to doing so. And they still get a great result. Um, I do it mainly because I'm just trying to cut down on the amount of work that I have to do in the, um, in the springtime. And, the, and, and the thing is, is that if you're going to with liquids, it's less, less, less picky, but if you're going to be doing a granular, so let's say, for example, let's, let's, let's think through this, Jonathan, let's say that your plan to scalp your lawn is in like late, like late February, right? Or well, let's say, I don't know, let's say like, um, like a couple weeks after you're going to do your pre-emergent application and you're using a granular, like if all of it isn't, like if it's not all watered in properly, which it should be, but it says it's not all watered in properly and you do like a heavy scalp, um, it, there's a likelihood that you could be taking some of the granules, some of that stuff out with the grass whenever you're, whenever you're, you're getting rid of it, right? So if you're going to use it, especially if you're going to be using a granular, a, a pre-scalp isn't a bad idea. Again, is it strictly necessary? No, but it's not, it's not, if you just think about what, I, what I'm, what I'm thinking about, if, if this is the grass and this is the pre-emergent, that if with the grass is a little bit shorter, it's easier for the for the granular pre-emergent anyway to get past the grass to the soil when it's watered in and for it to work better. Um, liquids, it probably doesn't really matter either way because it's just it'll get past it'll get past it without without any issues at all. So um, so no, you don't strictly have to do it. I do it mainly because I'm trying to save myself headache in March. That's why. All right, uh, Jonathan's saying I have turf type tall fescue located in Los Angeles. I don't, I mean, I don't know if people really scalping. I've never really heard of people scalping turf type tall fescue. I've heard of people dethatching it, like thinning it out, like a, like turf raking it or, or de doing like a light dethatching in the spring. Maybe that's your equivalent of uh, of scalping for um, for turf type tall fescue. But as far as cutting it super short, I've not heard of people doing that. And I missed your one question, one part of your question was, which was um, what spray tip do I use for application? I like to use this one, the flood. If you're just doing straight um, only pre-emergent, the flood jet tip, this one right here, this is the one that's gonna get you, it's gonna produce a larger droplet size. So again, if you think about it, pre-emergent pre is a herbicide that needs to get into the soil to work, right? A lighter, a finer droplet, a smaller droplet is going to be more influenced by the wind and it's more, more prone to sticking on the grass leaf. So a larger droplet, like a big, a big drop of pre-emergent, you know, water and pre-emergent mix is just, just the physics is going to be easier for it to get past the grass and down and into the soil versus a finer droplet. And this guy, the flood jet tip produces a larger droplet. You know, it looks like a, it looks like almost like a, like a shower, like a shower head spring. 
Uh, so yeah, so this this is the one that I would use for um, for applying prodiamine. And if you don't have that, I will get you a link right here to it, so that you're fully armed. You have everything you need to go forth and stay weed free. And Jonathan, again, um, you said you have uh, you have turf type tall fescue. Make sure that you read the label rates for um, the rate the, the rates on the label for prodiamine for turf type tall fescue because the rates are going to be lower than the rates I've been talking about tonight. Like the rates that, I'm, that I, I mentioned in the video last week, uh, that that um, 0.8 ounces with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet, that is for warm season grass. That is for Bermuda and Zoysia. That is way too heavy for cool season grass. So make sure you you read the label rate the the, the label and get the correct rate for your particular grass type. Um, Cause again, you have, you have fescue and I don't want you just to go off and just, you know, start blasting it with like a super heavy rate of, of prodiamine. In that video, I tell you to read the label, but here again, I'm gonna tell you who <laughs> read the label. All right, next up we have Cooper's dad. Cooper's dad, he says, hey Ron, Northeast Georgia, here in Northeast Georgia, what do you think is the best time, best thing we can, we can add to our lawn care routine to improve this terrible, red clay soil. I have 10,000 square feet of one year old zoysia. Hmm. Um, the things you can do to help improve it are aerating, like aeration is good. And then if you can top dress, that's going to, that's going to help it as well. I like those, those two things you said, you said one thing, but I'm going to call, I'm going to, I'm going to rope, I'm going to loop aeration in with top dressing. Cause I do the, I tend to do the both of them together. So I would say a, a good aeration, a solid aeration, and you know when once the lawn is greened up and it's growing nicely, like April time frame, late April time frame, and then top dressing will help as well too. Like I, I keep, I say this all the time. At least every week I say it at least once. Um, the the biggest benefit that I saw from top dressing is not not the visual appearance of the lawn. Yes, the lawn looks really smooth, like a, like a pool table. It's really cool to look at. But the the, the biggest benefit I got is, is how well the lawn drains, like how how well water just gets away from the surface of the lawn after doing that. After the first time, it was a night and day difference on on how water would no longer settle on the lawn anymore. So if if you can, Cooper's dad, and you got a zoysia lawn, so uh, so yeah, top dressing, you know, you can cut that definitely a little bit shorter. You can get that that nice pristine golf course lawn look. I would say in April, May timeframe, plan for a good aeration. And if you can top dress, that will that will completely transform um, your lawn in ways you just can't even imagine. So that that would be the thing that I would say is um, is what I would recommend. That is what I would recommend. All right, next up is Edward Alvarez. He says, thank you, Ron. Great info all around. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Edward. Thank you for watching. The guys here in the... Instagram, I'm looking here, nothing from you guys. We got Alex Lee in the house, a few others here, I'm just hanging out, all right. King Khan is up saying, what's going on everyone? Not too much King Khan, you know, living the dream. Living the dream, talking about grass stuff on a Friday night in the great state of Georgia. So Rusty's creation, now guys, Rusty's, if you've not watched this, if you look at this, I mean, look if you look at his avatar, Rusty's a pretty handy guy, he's like an engineer. I think what you're seeing there, that that, that mower in his avatar, I believe it started out as a Fiskars, I believe. Is that right, Rusty? And he made it electric powered. So he's a pretty handy guy, does some really cool projects. And if I can, I think I still have the pictures. I have to find them uh, at some point and show you guys again. He's a really, it's a really cool project that he did. He says, hey, Ron, in South Texas, uh, temperatures have been up, so prodiamine just went down. Good. I like it. As for liquid apps go, are you a single pass guy when it comes to uh, the the, oh, the hash or a crisscross pattern. Does it matter as long as the measured product goes in the correct square feet? Yes. So um, I just make one pass because I've, I've been spraying long enough that I just, I get, I'm able to apply it evenly. You know what I mean? So if you want to dilute, here's the thing. If you do the crisscross pattern, you're going to be diluting it. You're going to be cutting it in half, right? So, cause you're going to, you're going to have enough to walk the lawn in one way and then walk the lawn um, another way. You know what I mean? So I, can you? Yes. Um, if you, if you do a good job applying it to where you're, you know, you're, you're not overlap, you're not, you're not missing, you're not having gaps when you're spraying it. It's not, it's not necessary. It's not strictly necessary. Um, you know, for people that are brand new, I'll tell them like the first time they, they go out and they, and they spray their lawns, to they dilute the rate and they can then they can overlap. I'll tell someone that's brand new to do that. But as you get more experience with spraying and, and knowing how much product covers what amount of square footage, uh, there's not really, um, it's not strictly necessary, not, not necessarily to do that um, every time. 
And it, and frankly, it just takes less time too, right? Because you're doubling how much time it takes you to be out on the lawn because you got to walk it one way and then you got to walk it another way. So not strictly necessary. All right, next up is Adam Raka. He says, thanks, Ron. Um, you more than answered my question and I truly appreciate you. You're very, very welcome, sir. That is what I am here for. I appreciate it. Appreciate you coming to hang out. We have the great Alexander Lee in the live stream, guys. He's saying, fun times, is everyone. I wish everyone a successful upcoming lawn season. That's right. You know, Alex is going to be dominating again this year. You see, he's, you see, he ain't messing around either. He's out there turf wrecking already, getting his lawn right. He's doing all the all the foundation work to have the lawn in great uh, in great shape. And then uh, Kevin Beatty's up next is North Texas. So Kevin, what did you? What was your question earlier? Your comment earlier? Let me roll back up here so I can find it really quick. What did you ask about? I'm I can't find it. Um, is there's uh okay North North Texas? I'm trying to see what you what you said oh yeah okay should i hold off on applying pre-merger we're expecting winter weather yeah no okay so if you're in north texas like close to oklahoma you can wait give it a little bit you can give it a little longer um so i mean you're 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 almost like um on that that like third week of february time frame if you're gonna get if in other words, if it's gonna if it's gonna snow next week then yeah i would just wait man you're gonna be you'd be fine you don't have to you don't have to apply your pre-emergent now if you're, if you're gonna get snow next week all right, next up is No Name. He says, uh, glad to see I didn't miss the whole show. I'm sure I missed it, but are you doing pre-emergent this weekend? I am not doing it this weekend. I'm gonna do it next weekend. I have a commitment that I cannot get out of this weekend, um, so it will be next weekend. Uh, and if all goes to plan, I'll live stream it. So if the weather, if Mother Nature co uh, um, cooperates, I will live stream it so you guys can see uh, me doing pre-emergent on the lawn live, right? Or see me mixing it, I mean, I'd have to get like a cameraman or someone to point the camera if I'm going to be walking around when I do it. But I mean, the spring part is kind of uneventful, kind of boring. It's kind of boring to watch, just walking back and forth and spraying it. But uh, but the the mixing is the part that most of you guys um, seem to care about for the um, as far as getting that done. All right, next up, we got Mr. McNasty Motorsports. Who, McNasty, I got to tell you, man, your Instagram post of the Ferrari in snow was savage. That's pretty sweet, man. I really like the picture. Hopefully, you got a lot of a lot of um, a lot of views on that. It was really, it's a really really cool picture. I've never seen a Ferrari in now uh, in snow like that so it's a, it's a cool I, I did notice it it's a very cool picture he says hello all a, a bit late night lost track of time while <laughs> while bass fishing lake henry you know the thing is it was lake henry only for a few hours you know by noon it was gone so i, I show you guys that uh, at, and a lot of times i will show that and i'll show the after as well too so but when it gets all flooded a few hours later it's gone as, as soon as it stops raining it, the lawn drains out very nicely it doesn't stick around too long so there's there is that and then next up we uh Rio the hitman says hey ron will you ever get into other landscaping like planting shrubs flowers etc um i'm not gonna say never i'm not gonna say never but probably not right now because that sounds like a lot more work right i, I mean definitely not definitely not um any kind of trees and shrubs and flowers, and you gotta prune them, and it's just, it just it sounds like a lot of work, man. And I just I like I like grass. I just you know I'm, I'm a grass guy. So I'm not saying not never, but not right now. I'd have to have more free time to be able to take care of the shrubs and grass or the shrubs and shrubs and flowers. And um, I don't right now, so I'm not gonna say never, but uh, not uh, not in the immediate future. It will not be this season. How about that? This season you will not see. Uh, a YouTube video of me saying, hey guys, look, I got some azaleas and some other, you know, other, you know, shrubs and whatever, whatever kind of plants. See, I don't even know like flowers or stuff because I don't, I don't, I don't put them down. Um, I only know azaleas because that's, that's like the, the thing, one of the features of the, of the master's tournament. You always see their azaleas always look awesome, but, um, but yeah, probably not. Well, guys, that is all we have this evening. It's like we've, I've answered all the questions, all the comments. There's nothing else here. So as far as um, parting words, uh, definitely get your pre-emergent down. Um, by all means, do that. Get your pre-emergent down, if you're, especially if you're in the Southeast United States. Now is the time to do it. A bit early is better than a bit late. Humic Max is still on sale and it's in stock now. So if you order, it's going to ship you know, a day or two after you, um, after you order it. If you order it early in the day, it might even go out the same day. Um, and, uh, that sale that it's only on Humic Max is going to last until the end of January. So February 2nd, I don't want to hear, Oh, I didn't know I should have gotten all this kind of stuff. Like I, I, I warned you, I told you guys, so really up until the end of January is as long as that sale runs on Humic Max. And then the price is going to be what the price is going to be, uh, until then. 
check out the blog post. There's one on uh, drainage solutions for muddy lawns. Like if you have a lawn that floods a lot, given all the rain we've been having, I'll have that in the show description um, after the live stream ends. And I think that is, uh, is about it, guys. I really do appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for taking the time to come hang out in the show. If you guys weren't here, I wouldn't have anyone to talk to. And that would make me sad. So have a great weekend. Get out there. Have fun in the lawn. Spring's going to be here before you know it. Pre-emergent is a huge part of creating a lawn that your neighbors are going to envy. So don't skip it. Take care.